Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I got a appropriate shirt on today. Apparently I didn't plan it, but thanks for waiting. How is everyone today? I saw a green notice here. Chris, thanks for being a member for 20 months. Hey, Malfrey. Hey, Colin. Hey, Rod. Hey, Bill. Let's give a big happy birthday to Bill today. Happy birthday, Bill. And then I'm not going to be able to keep up with chat at that point. <laughs> hey, Dr. Dave. Hey, Ref. Hey, Tuxedo. Hey, Bearded Bucket. What else we have? Biney and Rushmere. Lisa and Zach. How is everyone? I had started to print um, because I did forget two parts to print, but it was only going to be about an hour, a little over an hour print. And I remembered about an hour and a half ago. Well, I went to check on them and one of them, the filament had gotten caught first time ever got caught on the inlet to the, to the FET or the PTFE tube, uh, got a little twist in there and caught. So then it, it was printing an error. So I had to restart it. So hey, Matt Lou and Kudrith and Durdackle. Hey, Joe, hey, Scott, hey, Pex Peppers. How are you? Hey, Obi-Wan. Who else do we have? Joe and Jaeger, Phil, Kudra. Thanks for becoming a member. Um, and I, get, I think I get to give away five more memberships today. I'm going to give away five more memberships when we hit 300 likes before the giveaway time. Does that sound good? Um, I know it's all got stuck in the printed part. Almost the same. Yeah. At least it wasn't a one and a half day print like I lost. Ooh, ouch. Hey, Squirrel Brain. Hey, Jason. You made me add a Mil Milo Mill to my project list after last stream. Wow. It's it's on the list uh, soon. It will, it, it'll get done. Uh, Bittery Bucket, thanks for the gifted memberships. What else do we have? Where I make one of these streams? Welcome, Saza. Hey, Zach. Zach was gifted a membership right after they said something in chat. Rod, thanks for being a member. Time does fly. It's ridiculous. It's, I mean, it feels like 2024 is already going by quick. We're only halfway into January. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Rick. The mill does look cool. Um, and it's going to serve a pretty, I think, useful um, job in, in my shop. Um, because the nice thing about it is it doesn't have, I mean, if you enclose it, sure, but I could potentially grab like extrusions and face off extrusions at a very basic function that I don't have a great way of doing right now. Um, I can have some confidence that I can square that up and get a good cut. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I should get on Tuesday, one of the inception machines, um, mill vices. I had ordered that, um, at the end of last year, um, right after, right after they went on their, their winter or their holiday break. So it's supposed to deliver on Tuesday. I bought it intending biggest use was to be able to bolt it to the shape Oko here and hold smaller parts. Um, but it's going to be perfect for the, for the Milo. Hey, Rick G. Lol. Welcome. Hey, Kit. Jay. Thanks for the gifted members. And PF Dennis, 20 months. Thank you. Hey, Laura. And I assume, hey, Sean. Why does 3D Musketeers blame me for everything? Did I get blamed? I didn't get a chance. I, I had a hectic morning. I did not get a chance to watch any of Grant's um, stream before um, this. I usually try to pop in there for a little bit and then have it on in the background. But I, I completely spaced on it. Tesla's welcome. Um. What are the differences from the OG tap to the one on the Phoenix? Uh, the one on the Phoenix is designed from the ground up to be machined. The, the OG tap is designed from ground up to be printed. What shape Oko model do I have? I have a shape Oko pro XXL. So I bought this after the shape Oko five was announced. Um, but at the time I bought it, the release was a good five or six months out. Um, if I was doing it again, I probably would have waited. Um, because I didn't actually use it <laughs> until after the five was out. So 
whatever. Trevor, thanks for becoming a member. What else do we have here? There's, there's Sean. M4D Mike, love that Phoenix in the back. What's left to do? I need to wire and hook up the tool heads and install the beds. It's really not much. It's almost to a movable state. I got an email from iBoss concerning the Polyphemus saying they grossly underestimated their logistics and they will be shipping at the end of the month. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks, Apollo. I'm here just listening, writing an employee schedule and another tab. Fun. Uh, Glendon, welcome. Lucas, welcome. Should start a s sister channel, Grant's Rants. <laughs> was, I, was I a subject of a rant? <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, Daniel, welcome. Shane. Okay, let me get caught up. Um, <laughs> okay, so we are back on the last stream in the Switchwire build. I am loving the look of this. I really like the touch screen on this. Um, the positioning is fine. It's out of the way of the door handles that'll be on here. Um, today we will be finishing up some um, configuration, um, getting the enclosure installed and doing a print. Um, with that, we are giving one of these away. So Jason at LDO Motors is kind enough, uh, came into stream last time and said, hey, um, do you want to give away a kit and some Nighthawk um, tool head boards? <clears throat> so we are going to be giving a kit away today. And that is the links, the links for the Polymaker filament giveaway that we do every um, stream. And this are in the description. I can't pin two, um, two posts. So <laughs> that's awesome, Bill. Thanks for being a member. Over 200 people at my birthday party. So um, we are not giving away the Nighthawk tool head boards. Uh, we decided to wait. We are giving some away just at a later stream. Um, once those are actually available, the, the, the tool head boards will be given away on a stream. And it'll be a stream. I'm going to cover installing Leviathan and, and Nighthawk. I, I intentionally um, asked to hold off on Leviathan um, install until the Nighthawk was ready because I want to do both at once. So that's why you haven't seen a Leviathan install on the stream yet. <laughs> that new 1.5 millimeter hex driver that LDO includes certainly feels like you inspired it. It's a neat little driver and I love how small it is. Um, I have a few of them now at this point. Nice stuff. I'd love to review one of my Tinkerworm channel that I started if I ever managed to win one. Nice. So, so yeah, links are in the description. Be sure you enter. Both of these will be drawn at the three hour mark. Same as every time, every stream, um, every Sunday stream three hour mark so that's in a little under three hours now you have to be here to win you have to say something in chat if your name is drawn hey jeff hey dj hey part-time gamer josh and ram hey matthias those touch screens are a nice size not too big and also not too small yeah i like the 4.3 inch size um the five isn't bad either i think um the smaller ones are usable. Um, on my Micron, I have a smaller one and it's fine, even though I haven't really printed with that printer yet. But I think this does add a lot to the to the build here. Bill Brothers, thanks for the gifted memberships. Gifting things on your birthday. What a guy. <laughs> so, what have I done? I did a little bit in between stream. The one thing that I did that I realized I hadn't on stream is I did not tension the Y belt <laughs> and I did do, I, I did perform some input shaping tests just to make sure I was ready for today. And I had some help, um, from a viewer. I know their discord name, but I'm not exactly sure who, if it's the same in, in chat here. If you want to speak up at any point, I'll try to pay attention, but Norgorot, welcome. And oh no, Coho, welcome. I have fat fingers and I need glasses. The five inch screens are where it's at. Enderwire build is getting close. I'm printing parts for the Tai Chi stealth burner. Nice. Hey, McCray. Better late than never. Hey, Shammy. Welcome. Party poppers. <laughs> oh, Rath. Thank you. 
So Ref here uh, was very kind to do guide me through a few things, make some suggestions on Input Shaper. We spent a little bit of time last night looking at graphs. We'll go over a little bit of that today. We're not gonna do a deep dive. Um, I don't feel like I understand it enough to do a deep dive, um, but we'll at least touch on, on things. So, a Tuxedo, thanks for the gifted memberships. What else? High perfect timing for my V2 rebuild. Nice. I think they do that every sale. It's happened to me twice. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay. The Y belt we had not tensioned on camera. So I want to do a real quick um, cover of that. Just because I think it's important. The PF Dennis, thanks for 20 gifted memberships. Yeah, there's a Millennium Milo V1.5 stream the other day where they went over, went over the LDO kit, which was very informative and and useful. Okay, so the on the spec switch wire build, the Y belt tension is done by moving the Y stepper mount back. The the attachment point at the rear skirt is slotted and it, it the front attachment point is into a t-nut that goes into the the y extrusion so you loosen this um bolt screw here loosen this screw and then an easy way is to get something sturdy and flat a larger screwdriver um, or something and push put it in between the uh, mgn rail and the printed part and you can kind of push it back and that's what i did I'm not gonna change it because it's done, but you can kind of feel in here what your tension is at. And it wasn't, I could move the bed back and forth a couple of millimeters before I adjusted it. So just wanted to explain something I did off camera that wasn't covered before. Did I miss anything? Yes, I got that. God, there isn't a US VFD for that kit. Um, and that's all about voltages. So we're talking about the Milo mill. Most of the, once you get to a certain power, the um, VFD spindles um, switch over to 20 or 220 volt. At 1.5 kilowatts, I don't know, there might be, you might be able to find 110 volt one, but most of them are 220. And once you get into a limited selection, you lose the opportunity to get things like the correct bearings in them and stuff like that, or it gets harder to find that stuff. So I think that's the challenge there is finding a good spindle with the right bearings at 110 volts for the US market. Mine will be coming with a 220 volt spindle um, because I do have the capability of plugging in in here, so. Engineering Chaos, the plan is to finish off this printer. We will be done with this build series today. Um, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> hey, Andres. Hey, Spike. Started out that way here today, but the snow has stopped here. Any idea why Polymaker don't sell directly worldwide? They obviously can ship worldwide since they do for giveaways. I don't know. I, I really don't know the, the logistics behind um, Polymaker, uh, Polymaker stuff. I am um, privileged enough to be able to, that they provide a spool of filament to give away um, on my streams, but that's about as far as my involvement goes. Um, I know you've seen like the, the number one partner uh, program that they've just started up, which is awesome. And I really like their, their written in um, requirement that their partners try other filaments. Well, even from the beginning when um, Nick approached me to to do the the earlier partner program. It's not it's not at the same level. It's not the same thing. But it was there was never any expectation that I just use Polymaker filament. I pick filament um, for my builds based on what colors I want to do and the manufacturer that has that color. Um, sometimes I'll do uh, based on a film of something of different material or whatever I want to try, but the the motivation around my color picking is almost exclusively 
based on the colors I want and who has that and what's going to go best with the other the other bits of the build. So I don't think I've ever seen switch wire enclosed. We're going to today, even though I have to print parts to make that happen. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Polymaker is about 10 USA more in Europe compared to their own website. Are they? Um, 1.5 kilowatts is about two horsepower and you would be hard pressed to find two horsepower, two horsepower motors and 110 widely available. They have a distribution contact, more of that. I found that one of the issues with my desktop mill is that it only supports one WCS. What is WCS? Set at the upper left corner of the stock. Oh, work coordinate system, got it. Um, I finally installed Clipper Stream on my V2 and your stream from last Sunday flipping the orientation was extremely helpful. Awesome, that's the point. <laughs> hey, Itch, Ick, Ick, what? Hey, John. Getting my V0 tuned today so I can hopefully request my first Voron serial soon. Awesome. Okay, what else is on here? What do we have left? This thing powers on. So let's let's power it on. Um, do I have to do anything? What did we do last stream? So we did last stream, we did the basic at homes. The extruder is calibrated. We we did our first our first pushed plastic, right? This is very very important, first first push plastic. Um, <laughs> the extruder is um, calibrated. It was out of the box. It it extruded exactly 50 millimeters of filament. So I'm leaving that. Um, we tensioned the belt. We got clipper screen set up. Uh, firmware is all set up. So I think we are on to. I want to touch on input shaper. I think early, and I want to. Do I want to start a PLA print before we put the, the enclosure on? I have half of the switch NATO built. Don't know if I'll finish. Hi, it's Black Point. We probably talked about this somewhere in the stream series, but what are the new things in the Rev C? So what Rev C is an LDO thing right? Voron has not updated the switch wire, although this is giving me a great opportunity to revisit the, the printer and realize some things that could probably be um, tweaked and updated and modified. So just making that clear that Voron has not released an update for switch wire. LDO for a value add in their kits that they're providing has, um, while the only semi update to switch wire is I think the stealth burners files are now in the in the default repo and in the in the manual but other than that no so what LDO has added is they've made sure to include all of the proper components a proper stepper and stuff to build it with stealth burner the Nighthawk USB connected tool head board is part of the kit the touch screen is part of the kit and that's the main, that's the big differences. Is it time for boat? We probably won't print a boat. We might print a low poly cat because I kind of like that model. Uh, it seems, seems appropriate. Um, now the switch wire that we're giving away today isn't necessarily going to be shipped out the day after you contact um, Jason, but you will get it. Just, just expect it. We're giving it away today. It'll ship out as soon as it can. It's not going to be a long time. So I started with the 2.4 over to enjoy building a switch wire. This is a good build. Um, th there are some things I want to use this and kind of work out some um, some stuff about it. As we'll see when we go into actually doing meshes and, and input shaping and stuff like that, like the meshes aren't perfect. And a lot of that has to do with the embedded magnets in the Prusa um, build sheet here. So this is basically a uh, MK52 um, Prusa build sheet. It is uh, just labeled with Voron switch wire 
branding, but there are other attributions printed in on here um, showing its origins. So there are magnets embedded in the bottom and we are using an inductive sensor. So what, um, so there's a few things you can do to try to get around that, to mitigate that. Um, the most drastic thing is switch to a different kind of probe. Uh, tap does not work on switch wire because it is supported in the middle. And when you get to the outsides, although when you're printing, you'll never see this kind of force on the uh, on a, a corner of the of the bed when you the the force required to actuate tap is too much and you won't get good results so that's why taps not not supported um, the clicky style probe a little micro switch would probably work well um, if you wanted to try to keep the inductive sensor then we could set up map out those magnets and set up fault faulty zones uh, faulty areas that is a function in the clipper bed mesh stuff so if anybody has a good mapped out fault zones set up here and i mean good like you're you we're using the same home points same end stop position stuff like that i'd be interested to see it Let's go back. Print parts for the 3D set Sakura 240. I'm already doing that. We'll talk about that. I can show you the parts I've printed. I've printed quite a few. Um, no worries, can take half the year, that's fine. Can I get an orange one? You can ask. I, I would think that's probably possible, but you can always you can always ask. The color was not, I don't think color was specified. Um, if it was specified, it's probably space gray. Um, but definitely, um, Whoever wins it, ask Jason if you want a different color. Not all the LDO STL files for this printer in their GitHub. I cloned the repository and there were many files missing in electronics and elsewhere. The LDO documentation, if we go to here and we go to, um, here, let's go. Let's go to a new one. So docs.ldomotors. If you go to the Voron and switch wire kit here, let me paste this into chat and I'm, I'm falling behind in chat. Um, let me get caught up real quick. So anyway, if you go through here, if you look at the, um, the printed supplemental print guide, this will say the things you print that are different, but otherwise you get them from the Voron repo. So the files that are different are here and they call out the ones. Um... Oh, that's Rev A. I'm sorry. Let's go to Rev C. Rev C printed parts guides is right here. You got to make sure that you're, you print the ones for the kit you get. Hey, Kelvin. Of course, I already have a non kit from when LDO was first getting into Voron stuff. Clicky is nice as well. Pretty new, but. Very nice concept. Okay. So anyway, that, that's the deal there. Um, where was I? I, I got distracted and I lost where, what I was talking about. Hey Joy, where was I? <laughs> what was the point I was making before I got distracted? Oh, so, I mean, we're talking about bed mesh, um, isn't going to be perfect. We're going to print. I think that's an area that I really want to explore more on, on the switch wire is a default configuration that will properly avoid the magnets if it's possible. Um, so. Where else are we? Let's go to the. Let's take a, a real quick sidetrack because I really like this and someone already mentioned it. Um, everybody here let, knows that I'm a big fan of the 3D sets RC, printable RC cars, right? Hey, Zarp. Um, they released a new model on Monday. It's basically a 240Z inspired road car. Love the printer name. Awesome. 
Um, this is very cool. It's rear wheel drive. Um, let's see, we can go through some pictures, but but see, I mean the 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 rear differential with suspension. My six year old loves the three D sets mini rescuer. Yeah, I'm the owner of a real two forty Z. Awesome. But yeah, all about it. What's really cool about this is you actually move these door handles to open the doors. The doors open, the hatch opens, the hood opens. It's such a cool model. Um, oh, here's a here's a good picture. So that's the rear suspension with the differential. So let me show you my printed parts for this. So I've I've I decided because it's available, this is a new model for them. They provided actual G code files for printing on a Mark IV. So all of these have been printed on my Prusa Mark IV. So probably just getting right into it. That's the rear quarter. It printed like this with some supports and I actually have the, the example of it. Did you have that semi remote control car? Like a kid, the hood open and you could program a little route with it. Oh, that's probably way too. When when was that re released, Shammy? I don't remember that. It's more detailed than you get off some very expensive kits from the big brands. Yeah. This is this is Jesse Filament's Brad's Orange Glitter PLA. But I mean, let's get in there and look at all the all the angles. Awesome. This is the other side with the support still on. So these are all modeled in supports. They come off pretty easy. There are a lot of thin build surface areas. So there, there's uh, brims on a lot of it. But yeah, it turned out really good. You would almost say you've sanded it down for that finish. Yeah, I'm not gonna be touching, not gonna be touching it. Um, there's other, like here's the, the cowling, windshield cowling. There's, there's the front bumper. These are, all the supports are still on here. All the, for the most part. Um, here's the, here's the rear hatch. So, yeah, I've got, I've got that much of it printed already. What I'm basically doing is it's not taking me any real time. I'm just setting up the, the starting the G code with a roll of filament in it and let, letting it go. So I'll, I've only printed the orange part so far. I'm almost, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the print I have going right now is actually going to have enough filament left. Um, I wasn't starting with a fresh roll cause I've used this, this Brad's orange on the channel for other things and I've done other stuff with it but I have a new roll on the way already. So if I run out, I've got it. It's in the mail. <laughs> anyway, that is the model I'm printing. I know I want to do a bow. I want to do a lot of their models, but this one just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't not start it. <laughs> I have the motor already. I have the speed control on the way. I have the suspension on the way. I have the tires on the way. Um, all the belts for the transmission. It's a belted transmission. So, and it's going to be about, about 20 inches long. So about here, it'll be about this long. And I am printing it in all PLA, Malfrey. I'm not expecting to leave it out in the sun or anything. It'll probably, I mean, honestly, it'll end up being a shelf queen, but So, yeah, um, that was pretty much the model I didn't know I was waiting on for the, the Brad's orange filament, but that's what I was waiting on for the Brad's orange filament. Cause that's absolutely perfect for me. Any chance you can share your print settings for those PLA parts? I can't because I use 3d sets mark four um now i use 3d sets mark four 
G code. They provide actual, you just send it to the printer. They do provide sets that are pre, um, pre, um, arranged and plated. But for the settings, I just use the G code. Now you might be able to look at that G code and extract the settings. Um, if they were done with Prusa slicer, it should have, and I haven't actually looked, it should have the, the settings in commented out at the beginning or end of the, of the file. Should I choose building switchwire than try or 2.4? I think that would be more of a, I, I think a, a little bit of a, maybe a budget question. Switchwire is not a cheap printer. It is a little cheaper than a Trident or a 2.4. Um, a Trident is probably gonna be more versatile. Um, I would do, I would look at probably a Trident for an early printer if the extra cost to a Trident is something that's fine. Otherwise, this is an easy build. Um, it'll work fine when we're done. According to my calculations, you'll need a bit over 600 grams of orange. Yeah, and I think I'm printing the last orange parts and I'm almost out. It might run out. It might be a failed print. <laughs> I'm not printing the tires. I could. Um, and I might print them just to see how they turn out, but I did order tires because those always just work better. Commercial tires just always work better. Hey, Bob Carnes. Hey, Uncle Paul. The Brad Orange has a nice powder coated paint look to it on that. Yeah. Um, I know someone who did the boat settings will be on top. Yeah. Do you have a link to the model? Yeah. Let me, let me, let me get that. Control C. Someone was asking for the link to the model. I'm scrolled up in chat. There's the link. Is this a conversion or a full kit? This is a full kit. Hybrid robotics. No bias. <laughs> hey, Dieter. Steve recommending a Trident. <laughs> could always build a legacy. You could. No bias, right? Might be able to open the G code and Prusa slicer. I could, I could open it in the G code viewer, but I couldn't figure out how to open it in Pru Prusa slicer. I tried that actually, because I, there was one one G code that they did. I think they have a mistake in it. Um, the little hatch piece, the real thin hatch piece, wasn't printed with a brim. So it failed three times before I just sliced it myself with a brim. It's a mark for the print won't fail if you run out. Right, but I won't have new filament in time to just let it sit there, heat it up for who knows how many days. I think it's a few more days until my filament gets here. So, uh... Fame. This is a Revo Voron. It comes with the kit. The hot end in here is a Revo Voron. It, come, it comes with it. I looked at the pre-sliced 3D sets plates to see infill percentage and number of solid layers and walls. It's doing two. I think it's doing two, um, two perimeters on everything and a fairly low infill. They do provide, they do provide um, plates, Greg. They do provide other files. When, when you download them, you get the full thing. You get individual files that you can orient and do everything yourself. You get pre-plated stuff that is kind of color organized and what makes sense for a uh, for the printer. And you get um, pre-sliced G-code for the Mark IV. It'll also print on a, on a 180 cubed printer, which is amazing. You only need a 180 millimeters cubed to print this. So any Micron Pluses or whatever could print that. Dead Aim. The giveaway will be in two and a half hours, about. They provide the 3 mouse files for the project as well. They say they use those to generate the cheat codes. You can find the settings there, yep. What nozzle comes with it? Uh, it comes with a 0.4 and a 0.6 Revo nozzle. This does. Hey, the name of 3D. Hey, Ed TR. When the current projects are done, all I will lack in the switch wire and legacy. I'm pretty sure once I'm done with Phoenix, I'll be the only person 
for a while anyway, with all of the Vorons. <laughs> I like how the build looks like an orange creamsicle. It looks like an orange tabby cat. Come on. It looks like an orange tabby cat. Okay. Let me get back on track. Open up the manual and let's just, I think we're done with the manual, right? We've done everything. We've got, we did all the, all this. Let's, let's get down here. We did all the wiring. Still missing the ears. I know. I have built a legacy. Yep. I have legacy serial number one. Our CF has legacy serial number zero. Max does not have all of them. Max does not have a V0. Max does not have a V0. How are we doing? Let's let's get those. Uh, once we hit 300 likes, I'll give away the, I think I have five more um, gifted memberships to give away. Let me see. Yep, I have five gifted memberships that I can give away. So once we do hit that 300 likes, I'll give them away. I'll give them away no matter what, um, because that's not going to be a requirement, but it's a nice little um, incentive. <laughs> I know. How does Max not have a V0? I mean, he started the project and then set it aside and Nimgria uh, took it over and took it to a home run, but... Uh, did you ever get a chance to try out the Revo High Flow nozzle? I have a Revo High Flow. I don't remember which printer it's on. But I haven't actually tried it, like pushing it. You have a VK serial, right? Yep, I have VK19. I have VK19. How fast can you push the switch wire compared to Trident? Not as fast. Your accelerations are going to be limited by the bed, really. And it, this uh, par, this is using a Nighthawk in this build. I think I have the only dual extrusion legacy. Nice. I was planning on doing that, then I abandoned that idea. I can't remember, but do you have the set? What set? Hey, Brent from Texas. Phoenix makes a great enclosure for a couple of cruises. <laughs> hey, are you his nephew? Um... Let me just go through. I think, yeah, I think we're basically, we have um, spool holder to put on. I'm not going to use this spool holder. I have my own that I like. So, bed, that, yeah, that's the end. It doesn't go over the enclosure. What so many people have pointed out, it doesn't go over the enclosure. So, let's do, hey, John. If time and money weren't a concern, would you self-source or go the kit route? <laughs> if money wasn't a concern, I'd self-source. Sure. Time and money, not a concern. Yeah, I'd self-source. No no problem. But, but that's very rarely not some level of concern. And what is, one of the nice things is it's not just LDO. A lot of the kit makers have upped their game. Um, so... Many of the kits are nice. I still, my, my consistent message is make sure you know what's coming in the kit. I don't care if it's an LDO kit or a Formbot kit or a Fizetic Fiz kit, whatever. You want to know what's coming in it down to the details of what brand steppers, what the specs are, that kind of stuff. And then make your choices. But the general idea is most of the of the bigger kit manufacturers have upped their game um, over the years and they're getting better. Della Glover, welcome to the 3D community. Hope you have fun. Any plan for a tap changer? No plans right now. It's a cool project. I just have to pick and choose. <laughs> What's your feelings on the micro source NG? Haven't used one. Good morning, everybody. I don't know how anybody in the cold areas live. It's not that cold here. We're, we're good. I'm in California. Did Tridex print your dual color stealth burner or was that done another way? I did a manual filament swaps on that because for some reason my Tridex isn't homing. Fides, etc. Yeah. Do we get the display flipped? We did. 
Yep, the display is the correct way around. Um, let's go into input shaping stuff. Let's just do input shaper. It's gonna make it's gonna change when we put the enclosure on it. It's going to change when we put the enclosure on it, but you'll be able to see it better. You'll be able to see it better before. Now, let's put the enclosure on and then do input shaper, because then I only have to do it once. Um, Nero 3D switchware is kind of the same color. I don't remember his. Um, a few days ago, low was 45. Took me a long time to get over. Saying Fize Tech, since it was just how everyone was pronouncing it on streams. I have no idea. What's the plan for the next build? I'll get into that. I do want to say, um, because it's being chatted about in here, um, are you's nephew is here. Are you kidding? Was a, um, awesome member of the community present in my streams and many streams. Um, and they did, um, pass, um, earlier this week. So huge condolences. Um, uh, thanks for being around are you's nephew. So. Honestly, Cyborg is a great option now. Only issue is a hot end. That's mainly something most people would swap to preference anyway. Yeah, Cyborg. I talked to Cyborg at Smurf. Um, depending on what, um, depending on what is going on at the time when they're ready for, they're doing a Trident. Um, I may bring have an opportunity to do that. Hey, create to expire. Create. Creatrix Brit, welcome. I'm not sure I've seen you in here before. Um, welcome. Need to add, yes, no need to add extra work. I, I have a lot and I'm, I'm working on trying to get the backlog of projects done. I am way behind, I keep getting behind. So. Talk to them about their choice of fans. <laughs> I don't I don't know a whole lot about their their product. I did talk to them. They seem like really nice people. Um, so hey 3DP Mamish. Mamsh. Showing support is great as a community and an amazing way to contribute. It's like to see is by showing the love and passion you had for the server and the community as a whole. Um 400 wow, 413 people here. And we're over 200 likes, so we're well on our way well on our way we we should we should we should we have 413 people here i'll give away memberships at 300 but we should try to hit 400 by giveaway time scott welcome um creatrix you probably haven't heard my squirrel story i have a funny squirrel story i'll tell i'll tell at some point i had a squirrel in my attic but um Okay, let's do the enclosure because I think we could do input shaper after the enclosure is on because that is going to have some impact on the weight of the printer and what those values are going to be. So let's let's work on installing that. I've got, um, by the time we get to that point, I'm hoping all the prints will be done because what I forgot to print is the LED holders and those are structural for the enclosure. Um, so I have them printing on two different printers one of them is done the other one failed so it's printing right now so the squirrel's name is jim squirrel's name was jim and poity poity dubbed him jim i think <laughs> let's not stop at 400 500 or bust oh, wasn't me i promise coffee squirrel <laughs> i love squirrels i i really i like gray squirrels um, I love the bushy, bushy, um, gray tail, I mean, but, um, this squirrel had, was living in my attic and it wasn't happy with me chasing it. 
It did a Spider-Man around the house. <laughs> we know you have a squirrel in your attic. We have followed you for a while. Yeah. Most of you do, but I don't think Britt has, has heard that story. I'll tell it in person sometime. It's a lot more fun in person. I did have a failed print. Yep. Gray squirrels are considered vermin in the UK. Ground squirrels around here. Gray squirrels are, are less common. Um, it's gray squirrels and ground squirrels around here mostly. A beard where all squirrels are contractually required to be called pea pod. The squirrels around me have mastered wall walking of my house with its textured surface. Yeah, I have a stucco surface, so. So I've, I've hyped this up. It's, I mean, it, it is a story, but I guess I'll, I'll tell it now. I mean, I was working in my other garage and I heard some chewing on something right above in the attic space. Um, I thought we had like rats or something. And I get up there and I shine a flashlight over there and there's this big old squirrel um, sitting there. So I, I head climbing through the rafters over to that area and it ducks out. And I saw where it ducked out. So I went around to the outside and it was sitting in the, there's a, there's a spot where two roof lines reach and there's a, a cavity there. And I was looking up in there and it's poking its head over the thing, just kind of looking at me. So I grab a, um, a tree stake that I had and just kind of poked up there to kind of disturb it. And it, it wall crawled up to the higher on the roof. And then I put that that stick there where it was trying to get back in and then called my wife and son out um, so they could watch that and i started chasing the squirrel around the house and it was wall crawling and barking back at me if you ever heard a squirrel bark it's hilarious um but i was running around the house and i realized in the middle of doing this that if i chase it all the way around the house i'm gonna find out if it has any other way into my attic because it'll it'll dart in there to get out so i did that um, along the way, I did trip on something and hit the ground hard, but it didn't go back in. So it has, it, for a long time there, it kept coming back. I put some mesh, um, in the area to keep it from getting back into the attic. And for a long time, I could hear it out there trying to pull on that mesh and I'd go out there and it would peek over from that, uh, over the roof line from that little crevice. And I, I'd knock the wall there and get it chasing and chase it around the house. And it'd bark back at me. <laughs> so I have I had squirrel in the attic and I have a skunk under my under my garden shed. <laughs> By ground squirrels you mean chipmunks. No. So we I don't know what the we call them ground squirrels. They have a thinner tail. They're still squirrel size, but they have a not as bushy tail and they're more brown colored. So we have ground squirrels and then we have gray squirrels, which are a very gray, um, bushy, big bushy tail. Let me confirm this is the least surprising thing I've heard this month. As long as you don't scare them, skunks are not too bad and eat lots of pests. That skunk has, has been around for a long time. Our neighbor's dog did get to the um to the skunk once and got sprayed right outside um uh, where my other garage is and it stank for days <laughs> so hey akash do you open a zoo in the short term not a gopher I think mothballs will get rid of skunks and raccoons. I heard that too. And I did try to put some mothballs up in that squirrel hole as well to try to keep it away, but it didn't, it didn't do a thing for the squirrel. The squirrel didn't care. Hey, Mad Cat. If the squirrel kept coming back, it probably had food stash up there, probably. And I did look around just to make sure. I don't know what season it was. I don't remember. I looked around to make sure there weren't any, any little squirrels. Um, no area where they were they were nesting, so. Never saw a skunk while living in Florida, but we have lots of raccoons. We have possums, we have raccoons, we have skunks, we have rabbits, 
couple different varieties of rabbit. We have um, jack rabbits and little smaller, fluffier rabbits. All right here. You have to use squirrel balls. I got a, uh, a live trap that I tried putting up there for a while. It didn't catch anything. Okay. <laughs> let's get the let's get the enclosure going. I've got a window here that's blocking my view. We are an hour in and we haven't done a thing. But that's fine. I'm having fun. This is my um spool holder. This is the spec. This is the file that comes in Switchwire. This is just a different mount. It uses the same thing. It snaps in here and it mounts to the side. I like the spool over here. Then along with that, there's a little spot for the PTFE to mount up here uh, with a with a collet. It's more possums than squirrels here in Australia. Yeah. What are nutrias? I don't recognize that. Don't want to ruin the squirrel train, but do you think the Stealth Burner fans are insufficient? Um, for what? For everything I'm doing, they've been fine. And it probably depends on the particular fan, too. Took a survival course several years ago. Squirrels are not that tasty. <laughs> we have raccoon squirrels, and I've seen a random fox here. Oh, yeah, we have uh, coyotes. We have coyotes here um, that I've seen. I used to see a lot of this when I'm out, because I used to run in the morning, like, really early in the morning. <coughs> so... Keeping an eye out and distinguishing between a skunk and a cat is a good skill to have when you're doing that. <clears throat> but owls and bats <coughs> and coyotes. I think I've seen a fox, but maybe once. <coughs> Sorry about that. Dry, dry spot in my throat. Squirrels can be smart. See Mark Robles squirrel vids. We had a bad in our attic. <laughs> what does the fox say? What does the fox say? Okay. We have the various bits that that attach the um, the panels. There's lots of VHB involved. So let me grab the panels. Let's open them up. Let's get it get it going. And I have to remind myself how this goes. So bear with me. <laughs> Got a lot of ducks, frogs, ibises, and drop bears. We have suburban coyotes around here too. Yeah. The coyotes around here tend to be a little um, they look a little malnourished. They're... Oh, oh Made a... Made a mess. Here we go. Poindexter, welcome. Around where I live, there are wild boars and fox. Yeah, we don't have... We don't have wild... Any kind of wild... Um, pig type, boar type animals right around here. Surprise 12 volt fan at 24 volts usually have a half-life of 23 femtoseconds. <laughs> exactly 23. Okay, we have clear panels which are around the front. We're going to start with the with the rear panels, I think, and I need to like I said, I need to remind myself how this all goes together. So this is a top panel that goes up Yeah. So in general, this is a top panel that's gonna go like this and bolt to the top extrusion. And then we have panels that go hit the other three sides of this and then it'll be clear from the front forward. There are some tabs cut into here and associated tabs in the other pieces 
to help line things up. Someone mentioned the switch wire squash ball feet mod in a previous stream. It makes a huge difference for input shaper and max Excel. I will explain more in the discord later. I would like to hear any of that because like I said, I'm hoping this kind of kickstarts some enthusiasm in tweaking some stuff and having a, a fresh um, build to kind of work off of. So let me get these, these all peeled. And so far we've been having pretty good luck. Now I've jinxed, my, jinxed myself, but for the most part, we've had pretty good luck with the, with the peel on these acrylic panels compared to some other, um, some of the others that may have had acrylic that was sitting on the shelf for longer or something. Speedboat Benchy on a switch wire. Now we did a relatively quick um, Benchy on the ender wire. I think we did a 26 minute Benchy on the ender wire. Which ends up being, I mean, honestly, 26 minutes is still a pretty quick benchy. Especially when you're watching it print. You say, oh, that's a fast printer if you're watching it. Okay. You peel way better than Nero, but if you gently heat that paper with heat gun, it goes even easier. Let's find out. I did. So let's see how this works. I ended up buying a new heat gun. And the reason I bought this one is I already have a ton of DeWalt, DeWalt batteries. And I wanted something I could just grab from underneath my, my bench here. So it does not heat up as high or as quickly as my corded heat gun. But let's see how this works. And I think it'll be relatively quiet for you guys because of the sound deadening. So let's do just a little bit of heat here and see if it improves. Finger under it. Don't hear a thing. Nice. Yeah, the... OBS sound deadening is pretty good. So now the trick would be. I mean, it's coming off fine. It was coming off pretty good. I think I, I would like to try that with some that was giving me trouble. Um, because this, this acrylic from this build has not given me really any, any trouble. So I don't think it's worth trying to, trying to manage that on camera, unless we run into a bit that's, that's problem, problematic. So one piece done. Get the rest of these done. Shoot it like a bandage, get it started, and just rip it. That doesn't work with this stuff. You gotta peel nice and steady. I use it with large batteries. I have some large batteries. I have some really large batteries. Because I have the, the electric, the cordless lawnmower. Yeah, these, this is gonna be tough because of these sharp edges here. The acrylic, that acrylic has a flat chain to it. It does, and I really like it, and it takes a laser engrave super well. Five amp hour battery for the heat gun. I own that one, pretty happy with it for printer needs. Yep, these, all of these little tabs, no matter what, are probably going here. Let's find out, let's see if, let's heat that one up and see if it lifts without. Hey, Robert. Let's see if that helps. No, it still, still tears. So we'll just get it past these tabs. Uh, 
depends on the angle we're attacking them from. Stick a piece of tape to it. This isn't, this isn't bad. Hey, Jamie. I did pick up, we talked about on, on a previous stream, I did end up picking up an air compressor. I ended up with, I, I, I went round and round on what I wanted. And really in, in the end, I, I bought the quietest one I could find. Um, so I bought a California Air, the eight gallon um, aluminum tank, was on sale at Lowe's, so. That is what I, what I have. I just got it the other day. I have the Milwaukee one for work and end up in the house for the printer. <laughs> there we go. Get past the, the tabs and we'll be ready to go. California are those had the Husky version that Home Depot had for a while. I think most of these, this class of air compressor, I think the compressor, the pump is made in basically the same area. They all look the same. <clears throat> There must be an audience for just peeling stuff on live stream. We're going to get multiple peels today. We get panels and display. Can't, can't peel the display until it prints, right? So. There we go. I don't know why my throat is so dry today. Hey, Ella, welcome. I have the Cobalt eight gallon air compressor. That thing is loud. I still have my cover on my display. <laughs> okay, so that one's done. Only two more. Bear with me. someone invested something quicker and less dirty for the for this protective sheets oh, okay this one's gonna be a pain be careful with the heat gun here um, you don't want to overheat you don't want to warp the plastic Well, some of you were considering ducky keyboard stay away really i have no idea what that is but there we go honestly didn't notice a peel on the screen and leave it on if it's good it makes a good screen protector oh no we got to peel we got to peel the screen the the masses demand it I don't like the bubbles that most of the, those, I'd rather, if I needed a, felt like I needed a screen protector, I'd put a dedicated one on there. It's 
started off so well, now it's fighting you now. Hey, Dave. Hey, Leroy. Problem with cardboard enclosures, they typically do not support the weight of a cat. That is a problem. That's a real problem. Anybody who's just coming in, we are giving away one of these kits today. The link is in the description. Um, we are also doing our usual Polymaker filament roll giveaway. I'm not, I'm not giving you guys the choice on whether I peel the screen. I'm peeling the screen. <laughs> I'm not sure the, the heat is helping a whole lot on this. Might be a little bit. Just got to get it past this point and then, it, then it'll go. Okay, now these things get everything caught up to each other. There we go. Once it started, it's so much easier. Killer Prince, thanks for being a member. 20 months, that's 80 streams. And more than that, because weekday streams, the, the Modbot collab streams, the, the Pooch ones we did on the weekday, some of them. So, so interesting. So yes, Daniel Modbot just did a video on tools, a tools video. And that is what prompted me to finally buy this. I'd planned on buying one for a long time, um, but it reminded me. And so I looked it up and it looked, it was, I mean, it was, I don't know what's reasonable in price, but it was, it was reasonable. Hey, Marcus. I'd suggest I, it is acrylic. Yep. This doesn't, this isn't, I mean, like I said, once you get this, this going past these, these first parts. All right. Mostly comes off good. Hey, Northern Customs. Uh, thanks for the content. Swiftwire, let's go. Yep. Hey, Latian. Now get the J-Ready Molex remover. No more mangled plugs. I have that. I actually bought it. Um, Molex. The Molex, yes, I have that as well. But I have the JST remover tool also. I haven't used it enough to really have an opinion on if it's better or not. Um, but it's probably safer. For some reason, when you said Molex, I thought JST. Lots of little bits. Am I being dumb? Can't find the link to the giveaway. Uh, refresh, because I paste those later, and if you had the page open already, you might have to refresh in order to see the, the giveaway links. Your drill equals Molex remover. Oh, 
Hoping to build a collection of festival stuff this year. Whew. I've got my my one fest tool. I got a track saw. That's they get they get pricey, and I'm I'm fairly happy with my dust collection system that I'm using now, which is a rigid shop vac. I I bought it at Home Depot a long time ago, and a one of the dust deputy um, funnel cyclone separators. That works pretty well, and I've got a. A, a hose that will adapt to all my tools. There we go. I can't afford to even say festival. <laughs> Tired of my terrible store brand cordless drill and stuff, giving up the ghost when I need it. I really considered getting the vacuum, but once I did the dust deputy and a and a proper hose for my setup here, I think it'll be fine. Okay, are we done? Did we do both sides? Yes. Woo! We're done. Hey, I was born on a Friday from Denmark. Welcome. We just crowned our new king and queen here. Didn't win on my first speech, the king betting, but maybe I'll get lucky here. <laughs> there you go. I have a lot of festival all corded and on this shop back. I have a theme, a lot cheaper than the festival and has auto start. That's one thing my vacuum doesn't have is auto start, but I have this. This is just one of the Amazon brand hoses, but it's got all the adapters and stuff I need. This is for the um, Shapeoko, still on there. But, and then all these come off easily. Yeah, this has been pretty good. I gotta organize and clean up. Hey, Brian. Oh, John, welcome. <laughs> How are you? this away okay things are peeled we are going to now grab i'm gonna put a bunch of tea nuts in the in the thing so where are we bunch of m53030 tea nuts Hey, George. Okay, so these are gonna go on here. So the side panels go on here and they go around the, the stepper drive and then the clear panel goes forward. These attach with two, um, three M5 bolts into the frame. So we'll put those on. Stop recommending me tools. I'm trying to save for an underwire kit. Underwire kit. <laughs> I'm building a trident with can dragon burner. What extruder should I go for? I'm thinking either Sherpa or G2. The only one of those I have experience with is a G2 and I like it. Um, there we go. That's approximately where those are going. Let's put this back here. And then along the bottom are going to be, I think we have two in the back and three in the front. Now back to regular T-nuts roll in forever. This one legged idiot has to venture outside in 15 inches of snow and minus 10. Have fun with that. This can go away. Okay. 
that again. There we go. Always an adventure. <laughs> I just noticed the link in the description for those of us waiting, looking for something to watch, and I really like that. How long have you been recommending pre-stream entertainment? Just a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks, Matt. Um, Grant and I um, were streaming at basically the same time. So um, we talked about it and um, are sharing each other's um, links to, um, and he shifted his time um, to a little earlier. So we're making sure that folks um, are notified on both sides and yeah, it's, it's a pretty good arrangement, I think. two of these in the top that wasn't good warming up a rebuilt these are on the heat break fan caught fire and sparked and now my workshop smells like smoke oh no your charlie creamsicle build inspired me on my next build can you recommend a filament that would match as well with the ldo red frame what do you what do you want to what, what are you trying to do are you trying to do a a Kind of a, a similar natural with some other filament. Is that the idea? Currently playing with a PO Mini. Jury is out. I don't think the belts are broken in yet. I don't know what that is. I don't like the Polymaker Orange PLA or ASA. Well, the color they're orange. Prusa Orange is great. Prusa Orange is very neon and I like it. Um, I still want somebody to make a similar to Brad's orange glitter in a ASA or PLA. Have you played around with Mesh Inspector? No. What does that do? Okay, I think we got all the, all of the, um, things in that we need and I'm going to try to remember what is the best way to um, assemble this and I think we're going to start with the top panel what discord is on your screen it's not stream chat what do you mean what discord is on your screen it's not to stream chat Oh, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> That's Discord. This um, stream chat I have on a different monitor. Um, see? There's the other monitor. So I have OBS, and then Discord was here, and then stream chat, and then stream stuff, and then the screen I share to you folks. And Shammy, I haven't turned that back on. Um, I keep forgetting to turn the, 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 the bot back on. I don't think there was anything on there to leak. Nope, that's just my general chat. That's just my general chat. We're good. <laughs> okay, let me just... These here, I mean, there's stuff that I would be very embarrassed to not embarrass, but not would not be good. It would not be good to share. Hey, 3D HP. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with this top panel and get it centered. There are no instructions for this. So this is, we're not going to tighten anything down, but we're kind of going to put it in place. Maybe me doing this again will kind of help set a order of operations. <laughs> Way to make me sweat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, uh, yeah. There's lots of fun stuff out there. Lots of fun stuff. Uh, 
Okay, um, that one is going right like this. So this is gonna go right underneath. So the top panel overlaps. This should be this should be flush when we're done. So let's Um, this one is going to take a 16 because the top one gets the, the spool mount. Uh, and did you do one of the bottle nose tips for the slab? Instructions say it needs support, but I don't see anything that looks to need supporting on it. I did not do a bottle nose tip on mine. I did the flat cover. That's something my trainer while watching. Awesome. Your third Voron. Perfect. Hey, Stefan. Build videos of documentation. Remember that. Yeah. Okay, that one's going there. And hey, I got really close on these. This one goes down here. Now, normally the spool holder would belt, bolt to, to this side or this side on top. That's why there's four holes up here. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna tighten any of these. So, but um, I like my side spool holder, so I'm using it. Hey, Ricky. Those panels will make it less entertaining to watch. I think I can get a camera into the front and it'll be fine. But I want the panels on for the input shaping um, results. Panel looks like Vanta Black. I would skip the enclosure on my switch wire. I mean, if I win it. Yeah, I mean, it's a great open air printer. But the enclosure allows us to do ABS and stuff. So. I just learned a lesson. Check the voltage on the fan before installing. Yeah. Do they do the colors and covers in different colors? The um, LDO kits, they do not. You can uh, buy ACM panels, I think, from some vendors in colors. I don't know what other options are out there. Honestly, there's so many, so many options. I, I don't keep up. Just getting these little extra bits of stuff off. Right here the these matte panels do show fingerprints pretty <laughs> quite a quite easily what are the benefits of switch wire over other printers fast z hops is really the the big thing with the belted z um an enclosed by design and enclosed um, setup as part of it. I saw a printer someone was viewing that sits on the top like most, but it pivots. Currently building my second Voron. I'll start my third my switch wire kit. I will win today. I love the love the confidence. Seven, thanks for becoming a member. I have the panels on her, so I got one. Not sure what color though. Probably just asked Jason to surprise me. Okay, and then are these 10 millimeters or? Yeah, tens. It's on the edge. But these go down here and then pan clips. Okay, so this is going to go there. Make sure this is, we're lining up the back here with the back of the skirt. And then I think, make sure everything's loose enough to put it into place. That goes right there, this. Probably gonna move over just a little bit. I want this to be flush 
this side. I want to measure that at the extrusion. There we go. This gets pushed up against that top panel. Let's see where everything is. I think that's good. I'm not, I'm not cranking these down, just placing them. Hey, BH, I think that facet would be useful with non-planar printing. Yeah, you'd have to do a different tool head though, because Stealth Burner doesn't have the right kind of clearances to do non-planar stuff. Okay, that side I'm pretty, pretty comfortable with. What time are we doing the draw? In 1.5 hours. And we're over 300 likes. And we're almost 500 people in here. So how close are we to 400 likes? Oh, we're over 300 likes. We're over 300 likes. Here you go. Gift in the memberships. People recommend an LDO 1.8 or 0.9 over stepper on land motors for Vorons. All of them, depending on the particular specs, or um, if you get the right specs, are fine. The LDO ones are proven. I would add a heat reflector foam on the inside. Yeah, you could better you could um, better insulate these for sure. We're at three hundred and eight. Nice. Everyone is like, when I win this switch wire, we should. Let's. Let's get that hype going. You're welcome, Sean. Just finishing new shop so I can start builds. Wife wants dining room table back. I don't blame her. I, I've stolen mine many times. <laughs> it's a max chamber temperature switch wire can hit. That's a good question. I have no idea. Anybody else with switch wires that have used them regularly have a, have a comment on that? Okay, so once again, we're going to get this. All lined up, and pushed against the top. What do you do if you come boozled? Oh, I have no desire to even get into bamboozled. Don't do that. That sounds like a terrible idea. Thomas, thanks for the gifted memberships. That is one of the worst ideas I have ever heard. Just, just ensuring my chances. Karma points. Okay, just make sure things are lined up and square. Go. Okay, what's the best stepper for v V2 Z axis? Just the, the what are they? The spec ones are a, are they a 60 millimeter body? Just the spec ones. You don't need much for the, for the, don't need anything really special for the Z drives. They don't move fast. They just need to have enough, um, they need to have enough um, detent torque. So they, they sag as little as possible and the specs to be able to, to move. Use U-Block, but it hasn't worked well. If you don't play, you don't win. This is, that's very true. Difference between super small chances and negative infinite, infinite, infinite chances. Forty-eight millimeter, is that what the spec ones are? Do we think the LDO will be putting Leviathan in all the kits soon? I would imagine, I mean, I think that would be the the intent. Okay, lining up on the back. Things lined up here. Things, I think I can probably tweak this a little bit. Yeah, move this over just a little bit. Almost finished with this build. Yep, we're doing the enclosure right now. Can speak the chamber temp on my switch wire 
but I've printed exclusively ABS on it for over 1500 hours without issues. Awesome. Okay, that is even. Okay, now all of this gets held together with um, these inside corner brackets. So these would go up in here. And I'd probably do these right here on the back. Does that make the most sense? Or inside, a little further inside? It would have to be in. You don't want to, you don't want to install this flush because otherwise you won't be able to put the back panel on. Because the back panel now sits in all of these into those tabs. So, oops, I left a little bit of paper on that one. I'm going to black out matte panels on the V2.4. We're going to get those upgraded, feel a lot cleaner. What are we doing next? Oh, we talked, someone asked about that. What's the next project? I don't know. Um, I still want it to be um, um, the Rook. The Rook build needs to get done, but I don't know what's going to make the most sense. I think that I'm going to put right in the middle here. Right in the middle here is where this, this little piece is going to go. So let's grab the tape. VHB tape. Is there another set of panels from the front? Yes, they are clear. What hot end will come in this kit when I win? It's a Revo. It's a Revo Voron. Revo Voron. So we have a bunch of these that we're going to need to put VHB tape on. I hope I have all of them. So one, two, on the middle top. Oh, shoot. I feel like I need one more. I think there should be two on the sides. Okay. Well, we'll be able to get most of it done. I think I think I probably need more of these. Um, 348 likes, nice. Something with Modbot. We are going to do something. I just don't know when. Um, I have some good ideas of what. We have the water cooling stuff for the for the VZ bots. We both have that stuff. Um, or if he doesn't, he will soon. Um, but and you know, how are the parts? Have you started that yet? Sixteen hundred and fifty-one hours. Nice. Aren't air gaps an issue with a butt jointed panel? Would you recommend some sort of tape or sealant? You could. You definitely could. These do end up being pretty tight. Um, this is not a chamber that you're as as designed that you're going to hit very high enclosure temps. Um, you're going to hit enough to print ABS, um, but the more effort you put into sealing it, the better it's going to be. With the amount of people in this chat winning switchware kits today, switchware cereals are going to pass up B2 cereals. <laughs> yes, on the color issue, I want to do mine in a red with an accent color, but I don't know which filament would match the LDO frame as well as the orange. Oranges match yours. That's a good question. Did you see the CNC mill from LDO? Yes, and I'm getting one. We're going to build one on the stream here. So stay tuned. That'll, that'll be a soon build. Um, I have some ideas on how to manage the Rook build because I have some questions on it. Um, so I think the Rook build, I'm just going to start and allow it to be interrupted either based on the mill coming in or me wanting to make a change on it. So we'll see. That's kind of where my thoughts are going because I want to do it. I want to, I want to get it, um, built and get the experience, but yeah. Speaking of, have you worked out that weird issue you both were having? Not yet. Water cooling, I've never really been good at plumbing. I'm not sure I should try it in the middle of electronics. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you. At least on the at least on the VZ bot, the electronics are all in the back. Um not on not under the deck. Can't miss a live stream. Thanks. Thanks. 
enjoy watching one of the Milo kits being built. Yep, and we're gonna do it here. It'll be interesting figuring out how to do that and then how to actually, cause we got to cut on camera, right? Hopefully it's not too loud. Hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll, it'll happen. Weren't you wanting to move back into the other room ages ago? Oh yeah. That's why the, the Milo build would be good soon. Um, I don't know when I'm moving back, but eventually I am. So what you're saying is V0 build stream 2.0 start January and <laughs> yeah, Jeff, maybe. I hope not. Has LDL released a CNC machine? No, but it's imminent. So the a couple of a couple of kits are going out. Kits have gone out to the the designers for for final validation check, um, and then a couple of kits are going to go out to creators. So. Would you consider a project for update V2 with CNC parts? Um, that V2, my OG V2 has, um, I've been installing the Chaotic Labs CNC parts kit on it to check out. Uh, will we be doing an ERCF V2 stream? Most likely. It's not planned yet, but most likely. Seems one want to send the frame to send, cut, send for steel fabrication. Yeah, Bill, there, there's definitely going to be, um, you got to set realistic expectations on any of these um, smaller CNC projects, right? So within a, a design limit is whatever quality or speeds and stuff that you can get out of it. Uh, if you have good expectations of what you can get, then... It's not going to do like steel well. It, it might not even do aluminum super well, but it should do it well enough. What's the status on your shed? I think you missed your conclusion. I missed your conclusion. Comment on that. I ordered crushed rock for my shed. I ordered it. It'll be here tomorrow. So that sets a timeline. I can't let that sit out on the, out on the street for long. So I forced my own hand on the shed. It's getting done quick. <laughs> Greg, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? What kit is the CNC? The Millennium Milo V1.5. Oh, I'm way back. What are the chances the LDO giving a CNC kit to a small channel that wants to start doing CNC reviews? I have no idea. You don't want to talk to Jason. Can you say what the spec is for the CNC? What do you mean? All the info for the CNC is out is out there. If you search for Millennium, M I L L E N N I U M, um, you can find it. Uh, the CNC looks like my workshop. My ears were ringing. Hey, babies. Other than tinnitus, <laughs> I think the CNC would be cool for PCBs. Maybe love to try it for that. Thought you started to prefer this setup. Why not just move the tools here since your main complaint was having them spread out? I can't really, if I was to move into here, I would have to move everything into here and then make that other garage my dirty garage. And it's not big enough. So, a mill that can't machine aluminum is worth exactly zero. And the, the intent is the Milo can do aluminum. Um, what I think what they're what they mean by it's not gonna do it as well as a professional machine, but it's going to do it. Uh, you're not going to be able to do it as fast and as big a, as big a cuts. So you're not going to try. You're not. You shouldn't be expected to do like real production stuff on it. But you should get good results if you keep your speeds and feeds appropriate to the machine. Are you going to change the name of Steve's channel to Steve Mills? No, I, I picked a good name to begin with. Cause that's what I do. I build. Okay. Um, I think I need a couple more of these. We're going to move on. I can install them later. Um, but I would actually, I'll probably skip. I'd like three on the back here, two, two, and two, just to really help tie this together. And then we'll probably do one in the back here. This is the dirty garage, yes. This is the one where I would use the table saw. I use the, the CNC router, um, that kind of stuff. I, 
Um, it can get dusty, but I haven't been able to do that because I have all the camera equipment set up. So I haven't used the table saw since I've been streaming in here. I hope doing the enclosure before a test print doesn't bite you. Any problems you might have to take the enclosure off. It's easy to take the enclosure off of this. If we have to, you'll see. Any ETA on Phoenix? As far as a release, no. Um, VHB. Let's, let's get these all VHB'd up. So I'm just going to run right down the middle of these one thing. Snip and that'll be nice and nice and quick. Does anyone have the printer box? What's that? Does Rev see the actual revision of the switch wire? No, this is this is the revision of the kit from LDO. So Voron has not released an update to switch wire since its original release. It's way past due, I admit. Um, but Voron is also done by hobbyists volunteering and things get updated in the flow of time and motivation leds installed before you finish that's the that's the intent the the led holders are part of the structural um, bit of the of the enclosure so What's going on in your previous workplace? It's filled to the top with 3D printers. So you have to move as you said, <laughs> yes. The whole reason I'm over here is because we did the, the build series for a Trident with Pooch and I needed more space. So I set this up. Um, it's worked out really well. I like having more space. So I have a plan for giving myself more space in the other garage. It's just going to, the shed needs to be done first. Is a switch wire a good machine versus a 2.4? Because here it's the same price. If it's the same price here, I got to recommend the 2.4. Born in 87 watching, 361 likes. I feel confident that we're going to hit 400 likes in the next hour and 13 minutes. So remember, we're doing two giveaways today in an hour and 13 minutes. Um, we're giving away a roll of polymaker filament and a switch wire kit. I will do a tour when I finish the setup. Absolutely. This setup is, yeah, this is definitely the, the epitome of there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution that works. I am going to go and look in my other shop just to make sure I didn't leave any of these somewhere. Um, at the same time, I'm going to check progress on the last two pieces that are being printed. So we are going to put you in the capable hands of Dancing Max. I'll be right back.
Okay. I did not print more of these. At least I can't find them. I, uh, D, DJ, for, for a moment, I, I contemplated moving Phoenix into place to do that, but I decided better of it. <laughs> Chris said, just starting that ABS print, make my own custom stealth burner, crazy dragon design. So Twitter's build you do because you like building things. 2.4 and Trident you do because you want a Voron. Yeah. And you know why I didn't install tap mod on my Trident? I'll be using the parts to install boop on my future Micron 180. Trident 2.4 builds <laughs> for a lapse in judgment. Love these colors. Thanks. So 70 minutes until draw. Yes. 70 minutes until draw. I'm up to five feral cats in the backyard now. Supposed to finish my V02. Okay, so these are the parts that I had forgotten. These are the LED um, holders. They are also they go they go up here in the front corners. Um, they're structural to the panels up there. I printed these in black because I didn't want the LEDs to shine through the orange or the cream. Um, I wanted them to be light blockers instead of having them glow up there. I did print them mirrored to each other, even though it really doesn't matter, but it does make a difference on which um, surface gets, it keeps the surfaces consistent on where they go. So they, these would go in there like that now. <laughs> these are modifications, yes. So Eddie the engineer um, modeled the original um, segmented LED pieces that clip into a 2020. And these are a modification of that. Absolutely. Hey, it's sick. For your less than parts tray, are you using your, oh. Um, I'm just switching filaments. It's just a filament swap on those parts trays. I just do a filament swap at whatever, whatever layer looks good when I'm slicing it. Okay, I am going to start with the two up in here. So I want these to go like this. So one way to, um, to make sure that we are not going to, because putting, putting a, a corner piece with adhesive on two sides into place is nearly impossible to get it done well. Um, so what I do on these is I leave the, the backing on one side, put it in and then push it up to the, the first, and then I'll pull this panel off or, or loosen it so I can pull out and then pull that, um, other adhesive or the other backing off and then push this into place. So you do it in two steps, um, because really just trying to put this in exactly in the corner, you're going to end up off. Does that make sense? So if I some tweezers. So I'm gonna leave it off or the this red backing on on one side. And then I think I'm gonna just use something like this as a spacer to make sure I'm consistent on both sides. Put this in here. I want to hold maybe a piece of tape. Let's put a piece of tape here. How does the Phoenix compare to a Milo Casa case in size? I think Phoenix is bigger. I'm not sure, because I'm not exactly sure what size the, the enclosure for the Milo is. Okay, I'm gonna put a piece of tape on here just to help hold this even. I have a spacer. I have this spacer made, but it's for the back. It's not for these sides. I could hold this here, maybe. Eh, that doesn't really help help all that much. So now I'm going to maybe I'll use the spacer here this way, um, in this direction. So this goes here, and then I want to make sure I'm holding this steady, and then just straight up. 
and that puts the first one in place. Are you? Oh, <laughs> I, I grabbed one. <laughs> I grabbed one with the the backing still on both sides. Um, are you aware there is clear VHB? I mentioned it once. Yes, I, I am aware there's clear VHB. I have some. Um, all of these kits have been coming with um, this stuff. So put it there and then go straight up slowly so that I don't, I don't want to push this way and push the panel out. I want to push straight up. Zombie, thanks for the super sticker. For those interested in a Voron type CNC build, I put links to the Millennium Milo info in the stream chat. Thank you. You have one of those corner pieces laying inside of the printer. Do I? Oh. Oh. Thank you. That might be the one I was missing. Let's recount. Stream chat and Discord. Okay. So if anybody is not a member of my Discord, um, we do, um, I do stream notifications there if you opt in. And also there's a little area if people wanna share links and, and do chat. I prefer all chat chat be here in YouTube because that's engagement and that helps things. But if someone wanted to post a link and um, to something or whatever, um, the stream chat in there is a good, Thing. And also, if you want me to see something later, tag me in there. That's a good way to, to share a link with me. That's what it's there for. Daniel, welcome. Thanks for being here. Happy Sunday. Armchair Heavy Industries is hosting a live stream in about 30 minutes. Updating Zolan Archetype Toolheads. Nice. Is this chat in Discord? I got 11 Discord servers already. I have a list this long. Um, there is a link in the description um, that, so that'll get you there. And then in there, there's a notifications channel where you, you react to the notifications you want. I only ping roles. I don't ping everyone or here in my Discord. I think I have it turned off by default. Um, so. It's cold. You got close to a foot of snow. That'll make moving fun, huh? <laughs> Only 11? Yeah. <laughs> Folks suggest me, what should I do next? Free CAD tutorial on. Ooh. Folks suggest me what I should do next. Free CAD tutorial on. It's always useful. I don't go over 200 discords this year. Okay, so that's one of them in there. We'll do it again on the other side. Maybe I'll get a different camera view on this one. from where we lived before this is all oh yeah a lot of it's infinitely more snow it's infinitely more snow right <laughs> than where you were before okay so i have this i left the backer on one side took it off on the other i'm just kind of you oh no i need some tape let's switch back here need some tape put this here and then we're gonna line this up. Kind of help hold that in place. It's not gonna be perfect, but. The vids are getting some attention. You two recommend them to me. Nice. Okay, hold this on. There we go. Okay, that there, and then we're going to come up in here. And with this up, and my just kind of guesstimate spacer here. So I'm going to put this right here, and then I'm going to make sure this is held square, and then I'm just going to go straight up, sliding that along the side panel to get into the, the top here. We have about one and a half inches of snow. 
15 miles away, there's driving ban because of snow. Wow. There we go. So that's pushed up in there. And now those are, are in place. Now they're not stuck on the side. And that's what we'll do next. And this can come off because that's not useful. Now if we start on this side, I'm going to move this screw. This will bend out enough. I don't leave the house enough to know. That being said, there's a roundabout close to the backyard and I've seen plenty of big trucks going way too fast. Yeah. Okay, so now we can bend, just flex this out and then I can get my, the VHB off of here. And now when we put this back in, I'm gonna kind of make sure that all of this stays tight like that. 387 likes, nice. And 500 people. <laughs> Are people back at school yet? Is that what's going on? Am I getting the the winter break? Are we getting the winter break crowds? Because I've had I've had a lot more a lot more um, live viewers in the last since the since I got back from Smurf. Really. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll pull this off. Americans can do roundabouts. I got two right next to my house. Okay. VHB off of this one. Start it here and then making sure that the top stays tight and pushing it down into there. <laughs> this is what I did in class. Wow. I, I can't have stolen a ModBot army. I'm, I'm hoping that I've gained some viewers and likewise. But we're different, different times, days. More people are enjoying my content? I hope so. I'm having fun. That's what matters. So now this can go on here, and I think I can just tighten this into place. This is, it just goes right like that. Not all Americans are... Yeah. I have 10 round, roundabouts within less than two miles from my house. And then this one, we might as well, I don't know if it's a great idea if we have to put this thing on its side, but I'm going to... Oops, wrong, wrong one. These use 16 millimeters. This will go on the side here. And then this can still come off. You're transporting and don't wanna, don't wanna break it. Otherwise that's right there. Speaking of rep rep festivals, when are you fixing the tri-bent? Good question. Good question. I don't want to say anything out loud. When I say things out loud, it, it, bad things happen. Um, maybe it's the extra viewers gained from your Tuesday streams. But it started in December. It started in December. That's why I was thinking maybe a correlation to winter break. Did you ever build an ERCF? I did. I streamed it. Um, it's been almost two years ago. Is that right? It wasn't earlier this year, or was it earlier this, or last year? Was it 2023 or was it 2022? At some point, we're gonna do a V2 on here, I, I'm sure. But I don't, I don't know a lot about it yet. 400 likes, awesome. It was 2023, okay, it's a blur. Okay, so now the top is secured. So what I, what would I do? So I, I modeled this little piece and this little piece is a, a assembly guide for these 
there 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 is a slot here that goes into the um that the panel goes into and that allows me to space maybe i'll demonstrate it over here that allows me to space this to attach it to the side space back enough so that the rear panel will sit in its channel right all the people i met in the uk which was awesome which was awesome do two calculations hey peter cool and closer Circa to chat. The only bad thing about roundabouts is when they decide to add traffic lights on the exits for no apparent reason. Yeah. I think they teach new drivers. I tend to do a trad rack at the same time as the RCFB2. Okay. Okay. So this, this is used here. Now, why did I... I put a hole here because I wanted to mark... Oh, that's why. That's why. So... <laughs> I put a hole here so that I could kind of mark where I wanted the center of these to be. And then I could see where that was. I could set this in place and then you line this up. It's the same width as the part and then you can put it, stick it. So, um, I think I'm going to do the same. So I want these and how many do I have? I only have four left. So I would like two more to go in the center. Um, but I think I'll install those. No, I'm just going to use these two. I'm going to call it good enough. Yeah. I'm going to put it here and here about, about at the third way marks and, and call it Shoot, I am short one because I need one up here. And that leaves me only three. So yeah, I will have to get another one. This tool is on my, um, this is probably on my Voron users GitHub. This is on my Voron users GitHub. This is there. The, the spool holder setup is out there. Better is the enemy of good enough. Do a live stream from the roundabout at your backyard. Oh yeah. See if anybody, see if there's any entertainment. Okay. If I go along here, how long is this? I don't have, I don't have my meter stick out here. What is the height here? It's about 400 and about 420 millimeters, a little over. So. I go something like that seems seems reasonable. What distance is this? Let's go 120 millimeters in from each side. Yeah, that'll work. Just consistency. So I'm gonna put a tiny dot right there and one right there. And one right there. There, that's where I'm gonna put the, put the clips. Uh, metric measuring tape is, yeah. So this was a recommendation. I'm pretty sure this was from Clow42, one of his tool recommendations. And it's a flat, flat tape. Um, and I have, I think I have the metric and the Imperial ones of this, but. I haven't used it a ton, but it comes in handy sometimes. Thanks, Daniel. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with the, with the printer. Um, then I'm going to center this one up here. So that's basically hundred millimeters right there. So right here at the 
at the 50. There we go. Measuring tapes are quite popular in the woodworking circles. It's very possible that one of the woodworking channels I've, I watch um, recommended those too. Okay, so all of these need to go on. So now the method that I use <clears throat> is pull one of these. And then I put this on here and I can see my, my mark through that little window to make sure I'm, I'm centered. And then this is gonna go, make sure I stayed. Stay center there. And then this goes with the, make sure the tape is on this other side. And then we just did that. I got that wrong. So make sure it's centered and then pushed in and then straight up. And then this can come off. And now when I put this back panel on, it'll all be flush. White paint marker. Yeah. Then we just repeat that all the way around. So this is going to go here with the that marker in there and then make sure it's pushed there and then just kind of slide it, slide it into place. Another one. I am being consistent on which surface I'm taping these to. It has zero, zero um, effect on the build, except it makes me feel better. So whether I'm doing the surface that was on the build plate, the textured side or the, or the layer side. So. That is those two. I'm gonna put the top one on on this side because it'll be easier for me to flex panels away to properly put the bottom one on later because I didn't print enough of these. So basically you would do this again down here, but I'm gonna leave this bottom one off because I can take this whole thing off and properly do it <clears throat> later. So last one. there and then set this on here and straight up okay now when the back panel goes on get the This will go in here, it's still set, because there's these tabs. This will still set into, into place. Just like that. Make sense? I am going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. Who else is going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival? That's coming up. Um, April 20th ish. Do you, have you done inverted electronics on any of your tritons? I have not. I have not. I have inverted electronics on the Mercury one. Thunder Keys is going. Jeff is going. For balloon markers make more sense. More likely to rapidly deflate them. <laughs> Jaeger's thinking about going with a good preheat. I can hit 70 C chamber on my switch wire. Nice. Morden is going. Trying to convince a wife to go to Rocky Mountain. Nice. Jigs for the switch wire and other tools make the build easy. That's the intent. I, I mean, I, if I'm using it myself, now all of these can come off. Uh, 
Australia needs a rec prep firmware so we can rec prep festival so we can get you over here. I would love to go to Australia. I have a cousin who lives in Australia. I have a cousin who lives. I don't know what area. But... When are you going to have 3D print festival in Nashville? When someone organizes it. Pathetic Puma's going, nice. See you there again. 3D meetup Sweden to look forward to. There you go. Australia has big spiders. <laughs> okay. Now when we're putting this in, we kind of got to be a little um, careful as far as lining stuff up because it's really easy to get things to stick like it just did. So I think I'm going to try putting these tabs, get these tabs just started on this side. I don't know what the best way to do this is, but this is what I'm going to do. I want all of this to stay tight. So as we bring this over, these are going to touch there. And we're going to come up here, keep things tight. And then on this side, what are we going to do? Keep things tight. <laughs> and then the bottom here is just kind of, kind of, I'm going to put a piece of tape here, I think. This is going to be my temporary piece here on the bottom just to hold it together. Just put a piece of tape around here. No, oh, it's not sitting there rattling. I'll do that one later. Thanks, Redacted. New 3D meetup here in Portugal soon. Awesome. Hey, I didn't catch what if you said anything. Are the are have you started the the Trident build? You know, have you started the Trident build? That tape is now permanent. No, no, this will be fixed. I promise. I'll take a picture. I'll post it to Twitter and the and the Discord. According to Presso, every bug animal in Australia is, tries to kill you. <laughs> hey, Ravenous. Okay, the opaque panels are attached and on. So now we get to move on to the clear panels. Oh, Bruno, I had the wrong... <laughs> you know Bruno. I, I'm sorry. A bunch of stuff got in the way. I hope starting it this way. Bruno is who has the switch wire. My apologies. I'm glad you were here. <laughs> Let's print. We're, we're getting there. Do you think you will be able to print anything in the next 42 minutes? Um, That's a good question, but I doubt it. When's the giveaway is in 42 minutes plus three seconds, 42 minutes plus three seconds. I built a Trident, but it was almost one year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got Bruno and Nuno. I'm, I'm reading chat and wires crossed in my brain. So I was actually referring to Bruno. <laughs> was there a test print last stream? I, I missed the stream. Um, there, we printed a snake. We extruded plastic. Three-ish seconds, yeah. I mean. Okay, these, we're gonna be using a lot more tape. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know I caught the tail end of you describing it to someone else, but what info with that spool holder? New standard for switch wire? No, this is just my my mod. Um, I like to put the spool on the side here. It feeds straight up here and then into the into the extruder. 
this is the the regular piece that would normally go up here it just snaps into that piece and lets me put the spool right here 420 likes nice We need 500 before the, we might, we have 530 people here. Okay, clear panels. We do not have nearly the same issue with um, peeling these. So something that we try to do in, in the project is all these rear panels have cutouts and stuff, but these are all cutouts that you could reasonably do by hand if, if you wanted to. You can make these panels by hand. It's not quite as easy to cut the clear panels. So these are all just rectangles. Um, this is actually the top one, but these are all just rectangles. You could you can order just basic rectangles for your for your clear panels here. And that's by design in the project. Is trying to keep this stuff that goes on there, right? Like that. Just a plain rectangle. Three D three D meetup Sweden, nice. So let's start putting let's start putting these on to provide support on the bottom. What do we have? Roller McNutt. Welcome. It's gonna go there. When is um, 3D, 3D Meetup Sweden occurring? Okay, so those are just gonna sit there. These are gonna act as helping support the panel, which I know I have to, I have to peel still. But then these are gonna, and then we're gonna make sure it lines up up here, lines up all along, and then we'll put a couple of of VH bead on connectors here, then we'll work towards doing the top. Took my panels off a year ago, forgot how cool they look. It's March 16th through 17th. Okay, so. Oops. oops. So far, is a great workhorse with some advanced capabilities, but more advanced stuff. Look to a Trident or 2.4. I would agree. There are some basic, I think there's some basic updates that can be done. The real challenge and what's kind of mentally for me, um, going towards a um, updated switch wire is really tap compatibility and a, a, a method that makes sense from a budget and upgradability point of view so this is going to slip slip into there and it's going to line it up vertical on, on this top edge and then no seam here and then i think i'm going to put a couple of pieces of tape on it to hold it in place temporarily so that has to go there then make sure oops i keep keep pulling too hard on it there we go yep that's that's flush so we don't want any gap here there doesn't need to be any gap i think tap would probably work on an ender wire I'd, I'd be curious, um, I don't have one here anymore to do any kind of weight measurements. Like, I'll put some weight on the bed and see how much it flexes in the corners. And then, make sure that stays, we'll go across here. Just kind of use the tape to hold it in place, make sure everything's Everything's tight. That seam is tight. Tight like a tiger. And her beds are pretty floppy. <laughs> Budget. 
wonder why none of the commercial printers use something like tap. Um, do they not? Really, 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 really. I want load cell. I want, I want a hobbyist level, not on a commercial printer load cell that we can, we can use because then that problem goes away, right? We need, we need a good load, load cell based solution. I don't think so. The underwire bed still flexes a good bit at the edges. Yeah. The, I did some testing. I mean, I, I installed an MGN 15 on a switch wire and it still flexes too much um, on the corners. I just agree with load cell. I've got a few sitting in a bag I need to get out and toy with. The load cell problem isn't, yeah. It's not a simple, just a matter of installing a load cell. It's about making it work. Um, the whole the whole solution from firmware to electronics to hardware. <laughs> I got a load cell in the bathroom on the floor. It's called a scales. This is true. Okay, so this, this, there are, okay, there are two different types of uh, pieces that look similar. This is a door hinge. It's a print in place hinge. I like these. I think they work really well. Um, this is a faux hinge. It's a solid piece. So this is going to go something like that and like that. There's two of these on either side. Uh, we just kind of place them where we think they visually uh, line up so somewhere that looks fine i hated the print in place hinge i have always been a fan of them i like them on the 2.4 and the trident um i think that there was a cad a model issue in the very early ones and that put a a lot of people off of them um it has been fixed so they line up properly and they have space for VHB tape and all that stuff that they didn't have before. So, um, I'm, I'm, they, uh, this is pretty much all I've used on my, on my 2.4s and Tridents and I've, I've never had to replace one. <clears throat> you hate the fake hinges? No, this is just an appearance thing. Now, which direction does this go? That's, that's the real question is what direction does it go? Do it, it would have to be, it would have to be this because that puts, this would be like hinging. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I never forget to measure, Bob. I never forget to measure. Something like 75 millimeters down something like that and then it's easy to line up because we can just line up this seam with the seam here mine are the early versions not so good need to reprint yet another thing on the list it should match the hinge direction yep and that's where these hinges are going to go like that so measure once cut twice exactly what about how the duet effector works? It's Paizo and Clipper has an implementation that feels like a quick way. Um, the, the lot of, a lot of solutions to many of our 3D printer things um, work great in an open air printer where you don't have um, chamber temperatures to deal with. Much of the, much of the, the different problems get more complicated when you have even a warm, even a slightly warm chamber. I'm just amazed he hasn't designed a printed hinge placer jig yet. Well, it's, don't need it. Did not know they were temp affected. Yeah. I'm not saying that all of that stuff is, but the, and it's not necessarily just temperature, but other things that get more complicated 
Actually, it's mostly temperature for the, as far as the enclosure. Cut this three times and that's still too short. <laughs> okay, let's figure out what we're gonna do on VHB for these. So let's get all the VHBs on. I've got one, two, I should have four of these. Yep, I have four of these and then I have hinges. Got to match the door hinge. I am. Where do people buy the color anodized maker beam from? Color anodized maker beam. I don't know that maker beam themselves sell um, color anodized because maker beam is a brand and maker beam, the popular maker beam um, extrusions are 1515. So you have a lot of choices in other 1515 uh, brands for colors. Um, you got LDO and DLL PDF is a, is one that's come on and they're doing, um, mostly powder coating. I'm just going to keep these kind of evenly spaced across these. I designed something pretty with a Voron logo or something. I want to make a hint that the hinge that doesn't hinge. This was a design choice, uh, aesthetic choice by Max. And I, I, I don't, disagree with it. I think it looks fine when it's done. Yeah, DLL PDF does a lot of custom colors. I haven't tried any of their stuff directly, but I've heard um, a lot of folks um, and I was concerned with them being a coating, being too thick and causing assembly issues with like rolling T-nuts and stuff. But I haven't heard that that's really a concern. There's going to be lots of VHB holding these on. Do the hinges again when you have the faux type opposite of the door hinge from what I saw. We will. We will look at it. My DLL PDF frame is high quality. I need a hot pink. Pandora's box is calling my name. Hey, it's Tor. Okay, let's go through and just get all these done. Because this is... We've got, yeah, we've got 28 minutes. There was no way we're printing and, and by giveaway, but we will be printing shortly after the giveaway, I think. Looks like you need to up your 300 light goal. Oh, it's, it, we've gone way past it. We need to hit 500 likes now. How close are we to 500 likes? 500 likes by giveaway time would be ridiculous. Hey, Nemo. Four hundred and forty nine. Four hundred and fifty. Yeah, we can hit five hundred. Let's hit 500. Oh, is Jason here? Everybody say hi, Jason. Everybody thank Jason for, for being, uh, allowing us to give away one of these kits today. Building a Canary Neon Micron Plus DLL PDF frame now. Awesome. Do I hear 600? Take my money for the Milo. Did you see that Chris Riley remixed your hook straight ad magnets? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He um he tagged me when he did that. That was that was very cool. I like it.
465 likes. Oh yeah, we'll hit. We'll hit 300. And we're at almost, almost 550 people. We shall hit it. I'm rewatching the Solid Fork and V0. Can't decide on which one I should build. Well, there are some updates to Solid Fork recently. They're out on the GitHub. And that's what we'll be doing an update when I when I revisit this the solid fork. And did I say switch wire? I meant solid fork. When we revisit the solid fork, we will be doing the the updates as well as um, as well as installing this um, Mellow Fly Five, I think, with um, tool head board, and it'll all be rep rep firmware. So another, another opportunity to check out RepRep firmware and a little more complicated build than the um, V0. <sighs> Solid Fork will also get 180 millimeter version. Yeah, and that's a big thing. That's a, that's a really good thing um, for it to do that. Okay, I am going to install these on the side. I'm gonna install them um, centered across here, not across here. So I'm going to do about 75 millimeters up from the bottom and then down from the top, just from my, my looking around here. So this should be, if the hinge goes this way, this should go this way. And someone mentioned that before. Yeah, this will go that way. So I think about 75 millimeters there. Gonna put that right there and right. Oops. Oh, that's too far up. I want to go down a little bit. That's too far up. Oops. I want or do I want to go 75 millimeters from the bottom? So that would be like, oh, let me double check this. This goes like that. Or does it go like this? I think it goes that way. Okay. <laughs> Where are we? Still got a V2.4 that I never finished. Long story. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Tinkerworm. Uh, yes, if anybody's looking for the solid fork and that kind of stuff, printers for ants is the is the way. I want to check something just to make sure, just to see. Let me open up. Um, let me open up. Let me open up Fusion 360. I don't want to have to redo this, so I want to make sure that I have the, the door hinges on the way they're intended. I think they go this way with the shorter part on the door because it doesn't have as much, um, it's only half a door. I don't think it goes this way. I think it goes this way. <laughs> but I want to make sure. So let me bring up the CAD and then I'll move this over to the... Over to the shared screen. Oh, what do we have here? Hey, Ari. Um... Let's build one slightly larger than a V0. Static ship, thanks for becoming a member. Hey, Brant. Getting everybody coming in. We're getting close to giveaway time. Shorter is definitely the door side, yeah. So if we go here and look at the CAD, and we can look at what the intended um, way is for the, the side pieces as well. So is that the way we were going to do it? Yeah, I think so. And it is closer on the bottom. So it's kind of, 
it's centered across this panel, not this panel. So we'll do that. Hey, Incendium. If it's bigger, you have Mordor. I heard Fusion was hoping we would get a Steve remix of something. No, I'm just kind of looking at... It actually makes sense for these to be centered on this panel because the door hinges are going to line up with them. And it would look weird if I put the door hinge up here. So let's center them across this panel instead of what I was going to do. And that's good. I'm glad I, I looked this up. Let's see what what is the actual placement here. It doesn't really matter. But if we measure, oops, not offset. We want to info from the top panel to the top of that is about 60 millimeters. So, and I'm guessing, where do we want to measure from? Let's go, let's go this bot, the bottom of this panel to here is about 75 millimeters. Okay, let's go 60 and 75 to match this. 60 and 75. Any reason I can't join the channel I'm putting my info in, but it locks on the payment and never completes. Um, roller, um, roller, if you're, well, no, it should let you do that. I don't know. You can't get a gifted membership if you're a branded account, but you should still be able to directly subscribe. I don't know. 75 bottom, 60 top. Yep. Um, Thomas, about you did not clean up the switch wire CAD. I did. Um, there are lots of areas because Max does direct modeling. <laughs> I would drive myself insane if I tried to get rid of every, every third decimal place part. Okay. Let's get this, let's get this going. We got 42 minutes. Um, what was the orientation? This goes like this. This goes right like that. <laughs> Modbot, thanks for being a member for 20 months. I think 20 months is, is the OGs. Sanity is not overrated. She's a wonderful person. She's awesome. It's probably Google being flaky. Yeah. Only 14 more to go. There was crazy people pushing the limits. Okay. 60, 60 from the top. So let's go ahead and do this. I can keep messing with this and not make progress or we can, or we can do it. Ian, 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 was it Ian? Thank you. Monkey Butler Labs right there. Okay, we are going to do this. Wait, this is this is a this is a hand grenade right here. It touches something and it's all over. Okay, 75 millimeters down, so we are going to get right. What was it? 60 millimeters down. Whew! Almost screwed that up. So 60 millimeters down. I can I can keep it square by lining up the seam right there. Andres, thank you. Jose, thank you. Ulrich, Dune, only been half following. Did Steve prep the printed parts in any way before the VHB? No, no, I didn't. I mean, I've not handled these much. Um, I could have cleaned them, some IPA or something, but I did not. 12 more likes for 500. We have almost 570 people here. Okay, so there's one on. Let's get this, um, get this 
continued. And this piece of tape is going to have to move because I think it overlaps um, where I want to go here. So if we go from here, yeah, it overlaps. So, but with the top one in there, we're, we're doing probably okay on placement. Let's there. Out of the way. James, thank you. 12 more likes for 500. It's <laughs> show offs. I lived and worked there for a while, Pleasanton, and did a lot of work for Xerox. You know, thank you for being a member. Andres, thanks for gifting the memberships. Okay. Okay, there we go. We go. Mark, thanks for being a member. Titan, howdy. Click that like. We, we're going to hit it. We only have three more to go, it looks like. Okay. Now I'm going to get down here at eye level. I'm going to measure to the bottom of the of the clear panel. I'm going to go to 75 millimeters, which is right there, and then use the, the seam to line up the rest. Bruno, thanks for being a member. We hit 500. Nice. That's, that's insane. Um, Pathetic Puma, thanks for the gifted memberships. Okay, so that's one side done. We have 13 minutes. We'll get the other side done before giveaway time. What do you think? Other side before giveaway time. Five hundred and six where it's nice to have a hook scale. I don't know if I'm immediately familiar with what that is. If I saw one, I'd probably seen it before, but. Okay, let's, I forgot to put the panel clips in, so let's put those in. Be nice to win the switch wire giveaway. Mm -hmm. It's a scale roll with little hooks at one end. My light counter is stuck at 24. That means that you've been here since the beginning, which is awesome. Um, if you refresh though, it'll it should give you a an updated count. Okay, once more, get in there, put in a piece of tape on the top. Thanks, Rod. I'm pretty, pretty happy with the, the colors. Okay, so that is going to have to go right there. Line that up. We're just making sure that there's no gap between these two panels. It should sit all the way back. And that's really most of what this tape is doing. Just holding that. Hopefully I got that up high enough to avoid the other one. I think I did. There. And then these down here can kind of be... Tighten them in place. That'll help lock everything. Lock everything in. Daniel, thanks for being a member. 
What are the plans for the switch wires? See, is it going to be added to your fleet? Yes. Um, the, the idea is to start using a switch wire again. My other one has ERCF on it. So it's kind of sat off to the side because I haven't wanted to deal with the tuning that. Um, so this is going to stay just like this for now. Um, get used and hopefully be kind of a check things, check um, updates, see where the pain points are. Input shaping, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I think we can we can guide some things with um, some input shaping results. Andrew, thanks for being a member. Ella, thanks for being a member. And Uncle Paul. We just passed 510 likes. Awesome. Nine more minutes till giveaway time. So be sure you're you're entering. I would not use today as the day to try to push it to the last second. <laughs> Craig, thanks for being a member. Um I would not use today as the day to push it. This, uh, three seconds is a very, very variable length of time. <laughs> Giveaway links are in the description. They're not in the pin post today because there's two of them. We are giving away one of these kits, an LDO switch wire Rev C kit and a roll of polymaker filament. Daniel from Quebec. Thank you for the, for the super chat. David N. Thanks for being a member. Depends on who counts. <laughs> Yours is about a week. Well, I mean, is it giveaway time? It's very close. We're, we're going to finish this panel before we do giveaway. You're going to show us how to create the slicer profile for the switch wire and show us how you, how you tune it. That that's, it's, it's not, um, that's not something that's really reasonable to do for me within a stream, but we will be going over, um, printing with it and, um, uh, and that. Okay. Switch wire kit is worldwide. Yes. Switch wire kit is wor worldwide. I need to win today. I haven't won anything. In a steep belts three seconds. I do have one of each Voron. Yes. I posted a link for the hook rule in Discord. Thank you. Just use the Ender profile and change speeds by a factor of 10. <laughs> Just use a Mark IV profile. It's pretty close. It should be pretty close. So you might be able to, you're going to be able to do Z hops faster um, if you run the Z hop. Seven minutes to give away. That means we have, we have to go here. So I'm going to, I'm going to reverse this because this makes more sense. And I don't know why I didn't do it before. So 60 millimeters right there. Right there. Not if you count the one. I have, I have two of the ones for ants at least. Does that include a cocoa press as they are technically vorons? It's not technically a voron. Very much not technically a voron. That doesn't mean it's not very cool, but it is its own product. It just happens to have had um, design done by Max. Um, CAD design done. That is very much Ellie's, Ellie's product with um, some Voron influence and Voron folks helping. If you look at the Cocoa Press um, page, there is some info there, like like Nimgria um, helping with the manual and, and Max helping with the, the CAD design. There is a very, I mean, the, I, I, I guess I can just say it. I am going to end up with a Cocoa Press. Um, but it won't be a build series. I'm expected to end up with a cocoa press. It's not guaranteed, but I'm expected to. You have two ants and one doom 
Franken Voron. Oh, the Tridex. This printer needs to be called Charlie Wire. It is! Good idea, Owen. That's a great idea. <laughs> is, there, is everything included in this kit? Printed parts or not? Why would anyone possibly want to contribute to a chocolate printer, 3D printer? I can't think of any motivation for that. Since I'm new, I made an error in the sign up. If something comes up similar and you entered a number there, we can figure it out, Connie. If you put something there that's similar and the, and, and we can and you get drawn, we can figure it out. I do not have the Voron shower. You're right. You're right. I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to retract that. Okay, 75 millimeters up from the bottom. I don't think I can do that. It's too short here, so I'm gonna have to do this. There, right. There. Do you have the Voron 3D pen? Now we're just getting silly. Okay, so that panel is on. Good, just in time. We are going to shift gears and do giveaway fun. Is, is Max giving out cereals for the Warren shower? No. Just took me an hour to put the belts on the V0.2, just in time to win the giveaway. Perfect. I'm loving the confidence today. Everybody's so confident. It's awesome. Ricky B, thank you. Oh, you're in the hospital. I'm glad that you're not now. I admire how meticulous you're being with the panel clips. I've always just stuck them down and called it a day. It's important. Jeb, let's, let's not win. You're going to do a little reverse psychology now? Reverse psychology to the giveaway entities? Should have done the caliper adjustment and placed each side panel head one millimeter shorter or longer than the recommended length. I'm always confident when I'm not doing the work. It'd be cool to have some printed spacers for placing those hinges. It could. You have Voron Legacy. I do. I have a Legacy. Yep, I've covered. It's 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 made a it's made a stream appearance. We worked on it uh, very early, very early in the channel. I think it was one of the First, right after the Trident um, build series, the very first thing I did. Needs cat ears. Woke up to my V2 Micron serials. Nice. The backlog. There was a backlog because there was a technical glitch with that. And I think they're caught up now. Okay. This is done. It is 1258. We're getting there. You're fantastic for engaging the community the way that you do. Many thanks. Yeah. Thanks, El thanks Jason. Thanks, Jason and LDO. Max STI is here. Awesome. He has, I have legacy zero one. Yep. Max has legacy zero zero. Just now notice my shirt. <laughs> Especially the way the stream started today. I was four minutes late because I had a, a one of these, one of these prints fail, had to restart it. Um, what else here? I won't join this giveaway this time. I will let someone else win. <laughs> draw, draw, draw. It is one more minute until, until we, we, we close it once somewhere around when 1 PM my time hits, we do a three second countdown. We do a three second countdown to let any last minute people, um, get in there and get their get their entries in. Um, if there is a new entry in the time that I'm doing that three second countdown, then I start the three second countdown over. Um, so, uh, Peter, I am expecting to install the lights today. 
I'm hoping. We have 615 people here. We need to hit 600 likes. Can we hit 600 likes in negative 10 seconds? Can everyone please pull a Polar Ted? No new Polar Ted Club members. The Polar Ted Club are folks that are not here when I draw for something. Um, named as such because Polar Ted was not here when I drew for a Trident. And Jason gave them a V0 as a consolation prize. So I'm here. 523 likes. Okay, we're not we're not gonna try, but we'll hit 600 before the stream's over. So I am going to close the Polymaker Filament um, entry first. We are we will do staged closing of these of these giveaway forms. And I actually don't have them open on this computer because I set them up on my other computer. I usually set them up here. So we have a Polymaker filament entry. I'm going to close this in three seconds. Um, I'm going to start the countdown three so I can get it started or right around giveaway time. Um, I'm over. Are, are you are you just catching up, Sanity? Are you live? Over under for how long three seconds is today? I have to make lunch soon, Steve. I feel like slacking and staying on the stream. You should. You should. No, no new, no new Polar Ted Club members. Okay, so Polymaker Filament One is going to close first, and then we'll draw for it, and then we'll close the 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 switch wire one. Um, so we're going to close it in three, two. Oh, there's a new one. Three, two. One and a half. One. Okay. Polymaker filament one is closed. So you still have a chance if you, if you haven't put in for the switch wire, it is still open. Um, it's my fault, no lunch for family. So let me export this out and then we'll do a, do a drawing for it. I both love and hate the let's see, three seconds. You know what? I'm, I mean, if I can come up with something that, that is, um, fun. Has anybody else, has anybody else done something like that? I don't know. Be interesting. Okay. Um, very first person, J.R. Kirk got the first entry in. Let's see who got in at the last second. Steve would be a good timekeeper in sports at school. Everyone would run world record. <laughs> no one wants to be the one to get this draw, thanks to laws of probability. Um, Stan Two Rivers, you got the very last entry in. Let's go here. So now we're going to go here. So we need a number between, I don't know, we're going to keep this simple because we do need to get back to the build. Um, so we're going to go a number between 1 and 10. Unknown universe. I want the kit. What's up? Got here. Hey, JC. The link is no longer live. The Polymaker one is not. The the Switchwire link is live. So I closed the Polymaker one um, after three seconds with no new entries. So let's see. Steve, you heard of the Ender three to NG that converts an Ender to a Core X Y? Um, is that the is that the metal one from? Um, I don't remember the company. Scott, Scott would be able to tell me. Um, but then since Scott said seven, we're going to do seven. Um, so let's go. This is Polymaker Filament. So this is the Polymaker Filament giveaway. Let me, yep, that's the only one I have open. So it's definitely the Polymaker Filament one. So seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and spin. Let me get rid of this ad. There we go. Let's see. Who do we got? Shammy. Is this really Shammy? Or is this another Shammy? Or is it the other Shammy? Or or that other Shammy? I know there's at least three Shammies. They all happen to be the same person, but... Is this Shammy? Congratulations, Shammy. Are you here? I'm sure you're here. You still have to say something. <laughs> So 
So now the question is, and I know the answer to this. I'm going to say that I know the answer to this, but you entered once, right? I absolutely know the answer to that. I have no doubts, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, but they are saying, they are saying to, to re-roll it. Um, are you sure? Because you're welcome to it. I want, I want to get a, I want to get a, a confirmation. I want a confirmation. You're welcome to it. Yes, number eight. <laughs> I know it's you. Um, we are going to re-roll it. So I need a number between one and five. I need a number between one and five. That is not a Polar Ted Club inductee. That is a, a generous um, vendor, community member, I think Sanity came up earlier and said four, so we're going to go four. Oh, that would have been a great idea, Colin, but I think we're too late now. One, two, three, four, spin. <laughs> no active timers. What? Who do we got? Who do we got? It's Shammy again. No, it's Reth. Awesome. Reth was a big help on giving me a little more information on um on input shaper and how it applies and what we can do um are you still here ref you've got two minutes to say something in chat and we're going to cover some of that and i'm probably going to screw some of it up explaining it but are you still here you are here awesome i will send you an email um, with information on that congrats And let me make sure everything looks good. Yes. There was another name with Reth in it, but there's only one Reth. Congratulations. <laughs> Cat does get busy. Hey, Fraser. How are you? I recognize your name. I will be, I need to chat with you. I'll send you a message. Um, so, hey, Brian, welcome. If twice in a row, that would have been epic. I know, I was I was wondering. Now I need another switch wire to go with it. Right, we're gonna get, we're gonna close. <laughs> we're gonna close this and this a whole new. So let me get rid of these names. So congratulations, Reth. Let's get rid of the previous so we had Shammy and Ruth here, but I'm going to clear this list. JC, thanks for the gifted memberships. So Engineering Chaos, you didn't miss anything. If you get your entry in for the Switchwire build in the next three seconds. Hey, BT Cruiser. Now I just need another Switchwire to go with it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to close the entries for the... Um, for the switch wire, the LDL switch wire kit in three seconds. Once I bring it up, Ooh, that timer is done. Um, we're going to start the countdown with three. Oh, I'm feeling much better today. Home health nurse. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better, Mad Cat. Um, three seconds has officially started. Yeah, I got to say it. Otherwise, once again, thanks to Jason and LDL Motors for creating really nice kits and sponsoring the giveaway. Absolutely. Okay, so we've had a new entry since then. So three, and then we're going to go through this. So three, two, one and a half. Oh, there's one. Three, three, two, one and a half. Can we get four more entries? No? Okay, all done. Oh, there was one. <laughs> Waited just a second. Oh, there's another one. Three. As I said, Steve needs to be a timekeeper at school sports. Yep. We need two more entries. Three. Single entries. 
It has to be legit. Three, two, one. Okay, we're not gonna hit it, but that's okay. I mean, it's dumb. It would've been 666 entries. <laughs> Who else likes interesting numbers? It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, so Jose got the very first entry here. Who got that last entry in? Who got the last entry? I got to scroll a little longer for this one. Who, who got in at the last second? Daniel. Daniel D. Okay. Give that a second to paste in. There are non-interesting numbers. Well, patterns and and stuff are, are more interesting. I mean, I, I took a screenshot when I hit 11,111 um, subscribers because it's interesting to see. Where are we at? Oh, uh oh, oh, there we are. 660. We have almost exactly the number of entries as number of viewers right now. Who's born? God, give me the switch wire. Um, Steve builds. So big, big giveaway, I think is worth. I think it's worth big giveaway is we need a number between 42 and 42. 42 and 42. What number between 42 and 42 are we going to do? Uh, why didn't that paste? Um, let's try that again. I, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't notice that it hadn't pasted. Let's see. Yeah, it's right here. Copy. Oh, because I'm in results. I'm not in entries. No wonder. I was in the results tab. <laughs> Sanity, are you are you live? Sanity? Are you live? Oh, it's it's even given the the have to wait to load. <laughs> okay, so that was correct. We had Jose as the first entry and Daniel D as the last entry. So awesome. Um Okay, um, we already chose what numbers, right? It's been so long. Yes, she's live is funny. She will hear it when she's live. Well, that is true. <laughs> okay, 42. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42 and spin. What is the height for the color change on the hex trays? Um, about there. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just kind of move it. Cliff D, are you here? Congratulations on winning a LDO Voron Switchwire Rev C kit. Say something in chat if you're here, Cliff D. Cliff D. Clifty, are you here? Scrolling through, someone will see, but if you tag me, it's even better. You don't have to, you just have to have something in chat that says you're here. You have two minutes. Cliff D. Cliff D. Cliff D is here. Congratulations, Cliff D. I see it. Awesome. You will definitely have to show us pictures when you build it. Congratulations. Let me get this recorded. Make sure we are good on names and nothing looks weird. Nope, Cliff D is right there. Good job. Awesome. Congratulations. 
Now, now you're now I don't remember who it was, but your kids can get their lunch now. <laughs> Jaeger, thanks for the gift of memberships. Awesome. Okay, let's close this and go back to build. Stick around, Saza. It's always a chance. Oh, excuse me. Stretch a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put the top panel on next. Let me close this. Um, so, um, Cliff D, what will happen for the, um, that is, I will give your email address to Jason, and Jason will contact you and make all arrangements. So, you won't hear from me, but give it some time, because um, this isn't going to ship tomorrow or whatever. Um, you'll work with Jason and he'll tell you, he'll give you a better estimate on when, um, when that is going to go out. So, um, uh, are you nephew? This printer is 250 wide. Now the whole build plate is about 240 ish, uh, millimeters. The tool head can hit 250 millimeters in Y, but realistic print area is about 230, 235 in Y. Unpin the link. Good call. That message. Trying my best to do my job and stay tuned in. What, what do we drop down to? We're, we were at 667. Now we're still over 500 people here. So what orange is this? This is um, Polymaker's Galaxy Orange ABS. Yeah, it's a good size. It's it is, you can hit more of the print area than you can. This is the same build plate as on a, a Prusa Mark III or Mark IV. Um, you can hit more of it with the print, with the tool head than you can on there. But um, not a whole lot more. It's still very usable size. Daniel, do you, you did not join the Polar Tech Club. Team Associated released a new car. What did they release? Okay, so this is the next part, and this sets on top. Does it, it should set on top, top. Yeah. Okay. So this stuff is going to have to move in. We're going to use lots of tape here, um, and these will get held together with these LED light bars. So. This is what is going to stick all of the, the bits together. So, um, so we're doing this in a couple of steps. Just finished assembling my five tool Prusa XL. And now I have a two day print going. Awesome. Do not need an RC car. I know. See it. It's sick. Welcome. I mean, good night. Your white jigs work on this. No, not really, because this isn't quite this isn't quite the same. Um, this, it doesn't need to be a jig for this. Uh, some tape and placing stuff and some order of operations is what we're looking at here. These are just regular slow um, lights. Yeah, they're not they're not fast RGB. Oh, projects in dad's garage. You were a sponsored driver. That's awesome. Okay. So this is going to set up here and I don't want to actually set it there yet. Set it back here. Uh, would not be easier to stick the light bars before fixing the side panels. Um, no, the side panels, I think, are easier. My process here is what we're going to go through. There's no documentation on this, um, apparently. So it is going to be icky sticky tape. Yep. One seven. Thank you for becoming a member. 
Okay, so we're going here. And we are going to set this. We're going to get a few pieces of tape ready to go. For 12th scale. Oh, okay. So th is that like carpet racing on road type stuff? Not much room in that tool head for wires where the controller is. On, on here? It all fit. The top clear panel is not notched. No. The, the idea is it's a lot harder for the home, uh, typical home shop to cut clear acrylic and um, plexiglass than it is to cut the, the, this is acrylic, but the intent really in the design is for those to be ABS plastic panels, um, which are easy to get or relatively easy to get anywhere. So. So this is going to go here and I, these are kind of bowed out, which is going to make this a little bit difficult for me to hold things together. Maybe I can do that and put a piece of tape over here. See, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> and I put a big old scratch in it. Yep. So learn from my mistake. That was a bad idea. So let's move that around to the back. Um, let's put this here and I'm going to hold it up. That is annoying. I'm annoyed I did that. Then we can hold this here. Put a piece of tape here. That's that makes me sad. That makes me sad. Oh, well. I'm just taping this in place right now. How long left? It's 8.30 a.m. Well past, well past my bedtime. Well, we are going until we're printing. So this is going to be a long stream. That's, that's the, that's the thing. Not too deep. Nova scratch remover will fix it. Okay. I will give that a try. I want to make sure that these are so we should be flush up against this black panel in the back. I don't need these side ones anymore. The tape on the side. I need to tap out before. Yeah. I mean these these streams can get long. It's been a while. I mean last stream we did we did do um, six hours last week. But I also wanted to finish this build. So that up. I'm going to support this. Charlie scratched it. Make sure that that's pushed against the back. And put this back down. What about that gap? So that pushed against the back. Oh, let's get rid of this piece of tape. We'll reuse this if I need to. You crash into bed. See ya, Ella. I am very, very annoyed. I think I'll try to polish them out. I think it'll be fine. And no plans are requiring me to be wide awake then. <laughs> And then I can hold this sideways. Let's just put a piece of tape there. And a piece of tape here. It doesn't really matter. Okay. We lost 200 plus that were just here for a giveaway. That's fine. We have 470 people here still. Um, several minutes past giveaway. That's... I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's incredible. Who won the printer? Um... Cliff D won the printer. Okay. So I'm taping these in place to start because I need a reference point for installing these to the side panels. Okay. 
So I'm going to install these with the, the front of it flush with the, the front of these panels. Um, but now I'm going to put the VHB tape on here. The tape is included in the kit. Yep. And this, um, using, using black, um, uh, for the print here, will also kind of hide this black, make the black VHB tape at least seem in place or appropriate. So that, no sleep till prints. Yeah. Wish I had 400 subscribers, never mind people watching. Keep at it, consistency. I think consistency is one of the biggest things. I have a little bit of um, ABS marks there. I'm gonna utilize my handy dandy heat gun to try to get rid of some of those. Just keep it in this garage, the dust and residue will hide the scratch. <laughs> Getting this warmed up. Again. This does not do this nearly as fast as my corded. That's my corded one. I'm gonna IPA wipe those bars before adding VHB. I did not. It's not a bad idea. I didn't do it on that one, but I, I should do it on the others. I did not, but I should. It's just to remove any, any fingerprints or residue, at least most of it. The only issue here at this point is now I got to make sure that that's completely dry. I can help that along with the heat gun though. IPA evaporates really well with heat. You're happy to inform you that all those leave the stream before part is printed will be sacked. Okay, please share your noise reduction settings with Taylor. His one doesn't seem to do as good a job. It's just OBS. I mean, he's using OBS. There shouldn't be any, any difference. Unless he's using something else. I'm just using the default, whatever comes in. So I'm just making sure that that's straight across there. Clear panels perpendicular, don't want racking skewing that results in too much fun aligning front doors. I mean, yeah. The the front doors going on is generally gonna hold the thing in place. The the whole assembly is not very rigid. It's it's adequate, but Audio kits are awesome, top quality. I have my 2.4 with 3,500 hours. Nice. The mods I made were when building it CAN bus, Orbiter, and Rapido. That's a lot of hours. Good job. Assume to be sure to position it correctly. Oh, yeah. I'm just putting it down the center of these to the best of my micrometer. Okay, so that one's on this side. 
this one is on this side. So now with the tape on here, I'll do the same method as, as I did before. I'll leave the, the, the backing here and then you put this in place and then um, slide it in. Now that backing is really sticky on here. It doesn't want to slide, um, but it'll be, it'll be good, good enough. I'll, I'll slide it over and make sure this stays down. Make sure I don't accidentally press up hard enough on it for it to lift. And then we take the top off, pull the backing off, and then we can put the top on nice and square. That tape may not survive for long. I'd clean panels with IPO. Well, it is acrylic, so we don't want to clean the panels with IPO. And in that surface, there are no fingerprints. I think we're okay. So the, the important part here is there is a slot on one end of these um, for the LED strip. We want to make sure that that's pointing back. Okay, moment of truth. So we want this one right to the front. Make sure we're not beyond it. Flush on the front. That is way, way. There we go. Right in there like that. Then when the top goes down, it'll stick on. Is this supposed to be hinged? The front gets hinged, not the sides. So that's one side. That's one side done. Recycle this piece of tape over here. It is going to be practically permanent. You're right. That with the whole the whole strip of of VHB, it's not going anywhere. And then it's it's slightly under flush here, which is fine. We don't, we don't want it over flush, otherwise it'll interfere with the door closing, but it's probably a millimeter under flush. So I'll try to duplicate that over here. Same thing, pull the tape off the side. We are going to look at it and I don't see any all the way to the top. Tape is a little, like I said, this tape is a little more um, sticky than last time I did this. Okay, it's a little under flush. There we go. Maybe should have installed LEDs first. Now they, they slide up in here without too much trouble. I didn't want to deal with them. Okay. So those are on, they, I got really, really good on consistency on where they are. Now, try to keep, tape off. Honestly, we can probably do this and then flip it over. I do have, where is it? Because I, the, the talk of cleaning the stuff is not without a lot of merit, especially on this piece that I touched more. Where's my Plaxo? Where is my Plaxo? I have some Plaxo somewhere. How is Windex? Is ammonia bad for acrylic? Or what about ammonia free? I'll do an ammonia free glass, ammonia free glass cleaner. Let's 
fresh, fresh towel. Let's do an ammonia free glass cleaner. Ammonia is bad for acrylic, yeah. This is an automotive glass cleaner. I think we'll be fine. So let's clean the underside here. Just do these two sides. We'll do the whole thing. Get fingerprints off it later. Okay. Why are the sides hinged if the light bars connect everything anyway? The what sides? Oh, these are not hinges. These are these are these are pseudo hinges. I mean they're they're faux hinges. Fake. It's just for the look. Okay, so now we take the tops off here. There we go. Whichever side is easier to grab the... There we go. Okay. Oh... So this is going to want to be all the way back and like just making sure this is lined up across here before I push that down onto the there and then over here probably take something like this. I just put something on the back there to keep it from touching in the back. Um, I'm using this to line up this side. And now I want to pull this out and make sure this is lined up. Yep. And then we can push all of these up into the Got to disappear. Lots of love. See you, Tinkerworm. Stay safe. Love each other and appreciate you all. Have a good one. And you can see, you can see a difference in color through these clear panels on where the VHB is sticking or not. So I'm pushing in those areas and now it's all consistent. Yep. That is, that is on. Lined up back here. Structural lighting, yes. <laughs> okay, we got a little bit of a little bit of cleaning. I'll do some. up here, go look here, oh, I have to pull out the FB20 before to get that, oh, I am not OCD, come on Bill, there's no level of OCD here, it's OCP, it's OCP, not OCD. A disorder implies it's wrong, right? Personality, OCP, personality. Okay, so there is still <clears throat> this spot up here and that gets filled with this. And that's just a PTFE tube kind of guide. So. Omni consumer products. <laughs> so this has some room to move around in here. 
we're going to put this in and stick it down and it's going to be OCD. It should at least be in order in CDO. <laughs> Robocop destroyed OCP. Obsessive collector of printers. There we go. Okay, now we got to put VHB on this thing. So, I don't know. I've never really thought about whether it would be fine to just put it on, this, on these ends and leave this open. It does have a, a ridge there, so... I think it's going to be minimally impactful compared to the whole thing being open. Common engineering disorder. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that just on the ends. That'll be a lot less trimming. If it becomes a problem, I can redo it later. But the problem is these thin spots are not as wide as the tape and I'd have to sit in there, sit there and trim it. So I'm going to put this just on the ends and see how it works. I've, I've actually trimmed all my other ones. Yeah, that's what, that's what my thought is. The, the main gap is, is way bigger anyway. It's not going to make that much of a difference. We are definitely going to have a long stream because we have to print today. But this, I mean, this, this length of stream was the, was the norm. Symptoms include too many projects, over designing, over building, solving problems that don't need solving. No, that I, I was with you until the last one there, Bill. I was with you until that last, that last part. See you, Colin. Okay. Chamber heats up that VHB is going to turn into super gum. I don't think it gets that hot. Is switch wire worth building more than Trident 2.4? Um, depends on your on your your needs. I wouldn't say there's many scenarios where it's worth building over those. It makes for a fun build and a good additional printer though. And honestly, it's a I, I like the I like the ender wire conversions. So My father-in-law has, I built an Enderwire for him last year, and he's printing the Skippy boat on it right now. Okay. So, this is going to go in here, and I think I'm going to... It's going to stick. That's going to be really hard to see. I'm going to come in from here. Get that there support it from there we go. Long stream is good while I try and configure Euclid for my Trident. Awesome. Going to help a friend convert his Ender 3 to switch wire. If it didn't need solvent, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay. That is on. CED has tried to dopamine levels in the brain, extreme dopamine release when looking at new tool, new tool catalogs. Okay, 
where are we? How are we doing? 420 people now. The numbers are staying. Numbers are staying. Okay, doors. We have doors. And along with doors, we have magnets. So let's get the let's get the magnets in. Will these just go in? Yes, those are gonna go in just fine. So making sure all these go in the same way. It would have been good if I had put these in before I did that, but I think I can. I think there's enough. Yeah, that pushed in just fine without too much force. That did too. There we are. So those are in, and then we have a top part. So this is going to go, I think it goes on top up here. Stay warm. It's cold outside. I'm nice and toasty in here. I actually turned off my heater. <laughs> and then we have door handles. So once again, we are going to use lots of tape and we're going to get the, get the, the door panels on. Beauty of it, never had ABS shrinking until now. Printed parts are just too small. Okay, let's see if there's any perceived bow to these. If there's a perceived bow, I usually put it um, to the outside to where it's bowed this way um, instead of bowing in. So that is going to go there. Interesting. Let's sit there. Not there. It's just slightly over. Just slightly over. Let's see something. I had this sitting on the thing, but maybe we just have to lift it up just a little bit. Not really going to impact anything else. Does it sit a little better here? Yeah, it's closer. Problem with an ender wire is by the time you get all the stuff for the conversion, you really should just do it right and pull a switch wire. If you already have an ender wire and you have other things, okay, so that's going to go there. This is going to go there. that again so that's gonna go right right there and we'll just put a piece of tape right here just to hold that up for a second things are gonna move around but let's get lots more tape to this one. Yeah, a little bit in that direction. So this one goes right there. And 
once again, I'm going to raise this side just a hair. Go. Now the rest of this, I think we can, yeah, put a piece of paper on the bottom. There we go. Piece of tape. The tops are important. So reference surface here is here. And this basically rests on this accent piece. Okay, so now a piece down here. loose. There. More tape. Yes, all the tape. I'm going to pull these together. Right there. More tape. This will hold the hold the gap here. Now the rest of it, basically, that's enough to get hinges on. So lines up. Can't really get in here to pull this up. That's okay. I'll just do that. Because the side, this lineup is what's important. Okay, let's go right there. That's probably good. Does that. Print moves at 4K max. And then these are going to go on here and fold around the front. But we have to, once again, put VHB on all these so we get all the spacing correct so that that hinge will, will work. And then we'll line it up in the same um, distance down as this side. Um, we'll do two right like that. So that's going to go right about there. So let's get some VHB on these. Hinge is not needed, just even more tape and leave it there. That's where clear VHB would be nice. Yes, yes, this is true. This is true. We are going with, I'm gonna keep this back pretty much flush with the other one um, because of spacing. I guess just one piece on the, on here. Tape can't solve it, you're not using enough tape. Tape or zip ties. You'll kind of see the tape if you look in from an angle, but, and you see the tape on the back ones, like if you look right, right there. <laughs> you kind of see the tape there. Okay. We may actually run out before we have enough tape here. Um, that's probably a comment on where could I have used less tape? I could have just done one strip on either side of this. How permanent is VHB tape? It'll come off.
it will it will come off but it the care you take in removing it may determine whether your parts pieces of your parts come off with it too um, I think it can help in with um, if you freeze the part if you can it can help I'm gonna have to dig into my supply of VHB I think because I'm using a lot um, and there's probably areas I could have used less but I'm not gonna change it now <laughs> Whole other thing right here. Cold and twisting motion removes VHB tape pretty well. Oh, my wife's home. Okay, that's three. And the last one, is it underneath here? Nope, it's in the over here and this and this these huge rivets <laughs> i have i think switch wire is the only um, printer I've ever ran out of VHB tape uh, of these LDO kits anyway. Okay, those build is coming along very nicely. Currently planning to convert my Ender 3 Pro to an Enderwire. So I can get it resemble something like this. Awesome. I can just use up the last of this and these latches. I guess that's not too bad. Just not using that much of it. Bye-bye. And on to the next roll. How wide is that VHB tape? I think it's 10 millimeters. I think it's 10 millimeters. And we got the top piece. This is the last piece that needs tape. And I think I'm gonna put two things on this since I have it, I have it all, might as well. I'm gonna have to finish this later. It's finally above zero here, so I need to walk the dog. <laughs> Hopefully he does it pretty quick. Have fun, right, roller. And then while I have this piece in hand, I'm going to check to see what, oh, that way. So figure out which direction I put those magnets. I'm gonna put these in the same way. Okay. With that, let's put some hinges on. You still got the back corner one you have to print? Yeah. Oh, that's true. I. <laughs> I'll need more VHB for that too. I, yep, you're right.
This is what I was trying to express. Can't get my brain around. 6T is hard to imagine. Oh, that's talking about um, um, magnetic, magnetic machines. <laughs> okay, this is going to go on here and this is going to fold forward, but it has to, it has to, the reason we put the VHB on both sides first, for one reason, is so we can line this up and make sure this will close with the thickness of the VHB there and moves far enough forward. So, do you glue your magnets in or just press fit them? For these, I just press fit them. It's just the doors. As long as they're in strong enough to not pull out when you open the doors, it's fine. If they pulled out, if I had trouble with it, then I'd glue them. But there's no, I haven't had to. Okay. Here's what I think I'm going to do here. I'm gonna leave the stuff on. I'm gonna line all of this up to 60 millimeters down. So 60 millimeters down. Now I'm holding this in place where it's going to work, right? Holding this. Make sure it is. Hey Morpheus, welcome. And then I'm gonna hold this front one in place and I'm gonna pull these, this. Kind of a, kind of a pain, but it'll make sure that everything lines up. I should just be able to close this up. And then we'll close that one up. See that? The orientation is the same as the sides. Yep. And then while we're here, we can pull this one. everything is correct push that in so now that hinges in place whether I like it or not now something I should have done because I'm basically resting on the bottom here and I, I forgot to think about it but as I was closing this I should have been lifting up so any of the little bit of gap in this um, hinge it's already at the top if is that correct? No, I should have been pushing down. So it's resting on the bottom, so it can't move any further down. I should have put it on, put it on the bottom. Um, so I'll do that for this other one, and hopefully that'll just be enough for it to make sure the door, um, as much as possible, doesn't uh, go further down um, over these these trim pieces down here. If that makes sense. So we're gonna do the same thing down here is I'm gonna set this in place and measure from the bottom 75 millimeters. There. Just gonna make sure all of that is in place or rub on the top of the trim during close. Yeah, that's the that's what I want to try to avoid. Okay. Um, which Discord has the Ender Conversion chat? It's on the Voron Discord. You go down to the switch wire. Um, you go down to the switch wire channel. There is a thread for Ender Conversions. Just making sure everything is pushing on that. So that should go there. Make sure, oops. 
Get right there. Open this up. Okay, so now this will go around, push in there. Ender conversion chat. What kind of watch do I have? It's a it's a first gen um, Apple Watch Ultra. Okay, so now when I do this one, I'm going to be pushing down on it as I rotate it into place. That way, it should help support the door off of those bottom pieces. Don't like that design for an enclosure at all. It is what it is. It is simple. It is easy to duplicate. Um, it is easy to easy to build. Um, although it does take care in building. So I'm pushing down and then push that in place. And that should be that should be that hinge. I'm ignoring all this MRI talk. I have slab parts printing. So I think this month's Charlie's Angels stream is going to be building the zinc. I have all the parts printed. I think that's going to be what we're going to do for. It is floppy. It is this, this, this enclosure is floppy, but it, but it's functional. It works. Now, as much as you're tempted, don't remove the tape yet. Oh no, I'm not done. And both, both hinges have to be on and we need to get the, the top piece centered, all that. So now we're going to do this side and we'll do the same thing. We're going to set this in place just kind of lightly. So we're not pushing on the panel. Cause if you push, if you, if you push on the panel and it, if you push on the panel, you can push this to the to the inside and if you if you push on this and then put this into place you're going to be you're going to force your panel in there so you need to do this lightly with these flush the cardboard box is also functional so making sure that these are all maybe i'm even going to put another piece of tape over here to kind of help keep that, that line in there. New innovation, push the limits. Boron users expect more, I think. What do you mean? I, I don't get, don't quite get what you're trying to say. I have an idea of what you're in, in general, but 60 millimeters down. The, the, a lot of, uh, it, it's interesting hearing talk about how things should be and what you could do, what mods you should do, um, all this stuff in a, in a printer ecosystem, but, and it's, and it's all good. I don't, I don't think it's, I'm not knocking it, but understanding what the design goals were before that, at least, at least understanding what uh, went into a decision on a printer design or whatever, I think that's missed a lot. You say, just do this, just do that. But that, that's gonna cost three times more than what we did. So, if you, if you, if you don't take at least an, an a time to consider what the design goals of the project are, then it's, I think it takes away from the, the suggestion, criticism, whatever. 
So, so now we're going to put down, we're going to push down on this one and make sure that we're not pushing in here. So make sure this is flush and we're going to push down. Not a lot. You don't have to push hard. Realistic expectations. Yeah. Why doesn't the V0 have mesh bed leveling? What? But, but that one's kind of, there's a, there's a technical reason. Um, but other things there, there, there's, there can be more than just technical reasons. You can have a, you're trying to build to a, to a bomb price. You're trying to build to a, I mean, a, a big part of Voron. Why don't you just use machine parts everywhere? Well, it's one of the core ethoses for the main series of printers is you can go, it's off the shelf parts. There's no custom, no need to go buy machined parts, custom machine parts, custom this or that. Voron design goal should be ease of use, build quality, functionality, innovation, and cost versus what is out there. Sure. I mean, a lot of that is, but yeah. There are amazing community mods that don't have to or care to hold to those standards or to those goals. It's not standards, it's goals. So... That's your opinion, Nab. And and really at this point, I'm done talking about that because you've made your opinion and it's fine. But I've I've reciprocated with why. And if you don't like that, then that's fine. It's not a problem. But yeah. Anyway, we're back on this. So There. Something I didn't mention that I probably should have that I'm realizing right now. It's very important that this uh, that this VHB tape not be installed too far that way. I'm very on the edge of being too far that way because otherwise it'll touch on the, um, on the front, on the door and make it stick. <laughs> so in keeping with the tabby, some of the clips and hinges and natural would have been cool. Yeah, I agree. I do have at least this is natural. I thought about that for that. Personally like this look, spent lots of polycarbonate panels, even five eighths inch fire retard drywall would have been cheap and functional. Coming late to this, nice to see switch wire builds. I build parts for it, but never built one myself. Awesome, thank you. Appreciate the overall conversation, yeah, it's, okay. it's all good. But there can be at least a means to talk and disagree. Absolutely, I don't, I don't mind, but at a certain point, we've both made our points. So there, there are reasons, it doesn't have to be in line with what you think makes sense because the the base the, the bottom line is we we this was designed what was it almost three years ago actually almost four years ago and it doesn't mean that we couldn't release an update that changes some of this so that I think is good. So I'm going to hold this front one in place. And, and, um, just now I, I, I appreciate that response too. I, I do, I do like that. Um, especially when someone can, we can go back and forth and shoot. Okay, 
that's in place. So I, I just wanted to say, I appreciate your response there because it, it makes me know that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going beyond a line or whatever. Um, any changes in mind for switchwire revision? Lots. Um, when it's happening, that's a really good question. I was right on the edge of that tape being <laughs> in a bad spot, but I'm good. Okay, now the front. There are lots of ideas for a switch wire revision. Um, like I said before, one of the bigger, bigger things right now is no tap compatibility. And I don't know what it would look like if there could be, but that's kind of the, the sticky point on where we're at. One of the things Nero brought up is Voron printers are designed to work. We build them to do what we want. Yeah, I mean, it is a, it is, it is not something that we're designing to sell or designing to be popular. It's designing for the need of the group. That's right. That's absolutely right. It's not, there, there are not marketing motivations um, in the Voron designs because it's not a company. It's not a company that sells um, anything. The Phoenix is blocking Switchwire R1 from view. <laughs> How are named models versioned? That's a that's a great question, Thetic. Um, right now, I mean, we're calling like Trident. Trident is on Trident R1, basically. It's it's the Trident. It's a version. Um, or a revision. I don't know how we deal with major revisions at that point. Would boop work for the switch wires? It's strictly a pressure. It's a pressure thing. It's not a size thing. It's how much pressure is needed to, um, to trigger it. Trident squared. <laughs> we got to get this thing printing. And we are very close because of pretty much all I got to do is power it up. We'll do some input shaper stuff and talk about that a little bit, and then we'll start a print. So let's get the, get the door handles on. And so all of these, so these are matched. There's those two. And here's these two. Voron next extruder when, that would be awesome. I like my next extruder on the Mark IV. Is there a V2 revision in the work? For both V2 and Trident, there's lots of little things that are, um, that have kind of stacked up. So there's always something in the works. Um, to what degree and what, how, how big of a change it is, I'm not gonna mention. <laughs> Okay, what do I want to do here? I think I want to press these on. So that's a magnet in there. And that can stick there now. That's a magnet in there. That can stick there. So now I want to use that to put this on. Let's put that one on. And this is why that display is not in the center. They didn't want to, ch I'd imagine they didn't want to change. I'm putting these on to where they don't actually touch each other. Otherwise they can, they can, um, otherwise they can rub against each other when you open and close the door offset just a little bit. Then this needs to get pushed on there. Now at this point, we really do need to take the tape off because we need to open these doors so we can properly put this top piece on. 
think filling up the Warren parts repo is a good idea to phase common parts into a repo and, and let the others link to it. Yeah. So I just put a Kraken mount out there actually yesterday or last night. Um, things like that. Common parts are going into that, into that repo. Let's pull these off. I have not tried the K2 clips in, in TPU. My go-to TPU printer is my uh, Mark IV. Uh, well, yes, yeah. My go-to TPU printer is my Mark IV. It's been printing um, the, the 3D sets 240. It's been monopolized with that. Mark from Pio Poly mentioned they will be contributing some load cell work to Clipper. Yeah, that's a big part of why I pre-ordered a Magneto X is Mark's attitude towards this product and contributing back to um, Clipper and such. So. Think of removing my Trident's cable chain and going umbilical. Okay. It's CAN a solid tool head solution? I'm using CAN on a lot of things. It is more complicated. There's more opportunities for errors and stuff, but I think CAN is still would be considered solid if you can find good documentation for it. Top door handles now. Yep, and then we will be, and we will be basically done. This has to come off, but I don't want to get rid of it because we might need it. So this has to sit. Let's put these on. Nope, it's the other way. No, that's still fine. goes there it goes there now if this opens up let's take these off this has got to go centered on all of that right at the at the edge I'm going to use my acrometer. Almost printing. Yeah. Speaking of can, does the EBB 36 have onboard input shaping capability? Um, I believe so. I believe so. It's going to go there. Now we can lift this up. Oh, <laughs> my wife just texted me, said, you have a printer beeping in the garage. And I know exactly what that is. So I'm going to go here. This is going to get lifted up. And this is going to go right there, I think. <laughs> so she's probably getting annoyed at the beeping, beeping printer. Don't blame her. There we go. So no, it, it doesn't need to be changed. There's nothing I can do about it. I need to just cancel the print, unfortunately. Um, I took a chance without actually checking and started, here we go. That's it. There's a little gap. Flexi, flexi kit. It is a Mark IV. It's the Mark IV printing the, the front fenders for the 240. And I, I had a suspicion that I was going to run out of filament and I did. And oops, <laughs> um, let's see something. Let's see if it's going to be here tomorrow, then maybe I'll, I'll leave it, but I doubt it's going to be here tomorrow. Let's see. While we're waiting, let's 
Let's plug this thing in and power it up. Can't you just load more filament? I don't have more of that color. <laughs> I don't have more of that color. But I don't want it to sit there for for too long. I gotta actually search here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Mm. It's in the other. Shipment arriving the 17th. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Wednesday is when I'm going to get it. I'm not going to leave that thing running waiting for filament. It's 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 it was the last two layers of the spool. It was the last two two less than the last two layers of the spool. No, I won't be here tomorrow. It'll be here Wednesday. Does anyone make a cheap, easy to add beeper for printers? If you're not running a screen with a built-in beeper, you don't have any way to do beep alerts. That's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. I don't know. So give me just a second. So my wife doesn't go nuts with the beeping printer. Um, I'm going to go unload the print, the filament and let the, let the print fail. Um, I will be right back. It'll take 30 seconds. I will be right back. That's how far I got. Oops. But this is a good example. I'll just pop off right like that. These are the front front fenders. And there is a headlight piece goes on there. Enough that my microwave washing machine dishwasher beep. Yeah. So that's okay. It wasn't, a, like I said, it wasn't a lot of filament. It was. It was like two, two layers on the, on the spool. I knew I was taking a chance. It is the 240. Yep. This is the 3D sets, um, 240 SX model. These parts are good. So I got something out of it. Put all that over there. Let us I turn it on. Yeah, I'll probably do it for a Charlie's Angels build stream. Okay, turning it on. I did buy the 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 Dotson kit. Yep. On the release day, it released on Monday. And I've got a bunch of the parts printed already. How much fine, how much fine tuning to do, or is that from the stock manual? That is um, their supplied G code. It was turning out good, so I just went with it. 240Z, not 240SX. I don't know if I said SX. It's a 240Z. Ah. 
I expect before very long at all, they're going to release an all wheel drive model inspired by some, by some car. I said SX, I meant Z. I apologize. It's a 240Z inspired. Yeah. Um, okay, printer's on. Printer could print right now. Printer could print right now, but we want to do input shaper tuning on it, right? So the challenge with input shaper on a switch wire, for example, is that you have two completely separate um, um, systems for the X and Y. So on a core XY, you can put one sensor on there and get data for X and Y movements. So, but on switch wire, the tool head sensor in here is not going to measure anything off of the bed. Um, any active buzzer made for Arduino will work for a beeper. Yeah. Have to go. See you, Andres. So for input shaping on this, although you can talk about ideal locations and optimizing your results for the purposes of this build and what's included in the kit, we are going to use the ADXL built into the Nighthawk tool headboard for X. And we are going to use the LDO um, ADXL kit for the Y. Okay. So there are a few different ways that you could mount because now we're done for X. That's easy. The, the ADXL is built in. Don't have to worry about mounting it. If you wanted to, you could mount a, an, an exterior one to the bosses on the back of the stealth burner. I reached 600 likes. Awesome. I see that. I see the six. Um, you could mount it to the bosses on the back of the stealth burner tool head. Um, but for this, because it's included in the kit, the way this is going, um, we're going to use the tool head for X and it's going to be okay. We're going to get results. They're going to be usable. Um, I will figure out how it prints to how in, how well they work that way. But um, anyway, for why it's a little more difficult. Where do you attach one of these sensors? There's a few different ways I've seen people do it. Some people have like printed a mount and then put the, the sensor on there and then run your, your thing. Um, some people have bolted it to these um, pegs at the back of the printer. Um, some have taken the build sheet off and used one of these bolts, preferably the center one, because you want kind of the center of mass of this, probably, ideally. Um, but I think, and I don't know how much I've been told it doesn't make that big of a difference, but I think the mass of this sheet is significant enough or would like to know if it's significant enough to impact. So I'd rather have the sheet on there during the test. Um, we talked about maybe doing a magnetic mount to where you can still put it in the center, but on magnets, I don't know how well that would work. But what I did is I made a mount. Okay. So I modeled a mount. Um, I modeled a mount that looks like this. So where this goes has a heat set insert there. There's a couple of screws to mount the, the, the sensor here. Um, and then it has a 30 millimeter screw that goes through here and clamps. Now there is a tiny little feature, a little bit here that comes forward so that when you put this on the front, um, bed standoff and you tighten that screw down, it pulls it into the bed so it can't twist and rotate. So if we look at this, go closer. Now this is not an ideal location, but this is somewhere where we can use to measure this today. Um, have you ever compared tool head PCB ADXL readings? versus bolt-on ones. I have not personally. I haven't I haven't taken the time to do that. So now this does require that this clamping bolt be removed. 
uh, in between. So if we put this in here and kind of hold it in place and tighten this down. And as you notice, it's kind of pulling into, into place. And now that, that does not move. So um, the, the reason be, the, my first version didn't have a little notch in the end of the slot and it, it did, it, it wiggled. But once I put that little notch in there, the clamp itself is now pulling the whole mount into the side of the bed and indexing it there. I, I finished this in, um, let's just say very recently. <laughs> now, full disclosure, I did some input shaper testing on this last night. Ref um, was kind enough to kind of guide me through some things and help explain the results I was getting and making suggestions um, for where we could go to try other things. Um, and kind of looking at the results and what, what parts could be um, causing that location of the sensor, that kind of stuff. So that goes there. Now I've got this all on and everything. I got to shut it down because we need to connect the cable. So let me, let me shut this down. Um, more system shut down host. Use a clamp style mount to do input shaper on my TiVo tornado. I have a mount. Where is it? Do I have it out here? This is, this is a similar design that I did. And this is very specifically for a Revo hot end on a mini stealth burner. This fits in there and it clamps around the nozzle on a Revo um, stealth burner. Mini stealth burner. I will post this STL with the understanding that it's probably not the ideal location to get um, results on this. But the question is, is it a ideal enough <laughs> location? I just ended up VHBing it to the bed. VHB is really flexible though. And I'm really curious how, um, how much that does impact the results. It would be cool to mount to the bed screw in the middle and do a comparison run. And I've not done that directly here, but Rath has done that and gets really clean results from bolting it to the center of the bed. Almost finished building my switch wires. It'd be nice to have it, but not in the rush yet. Ideal is for discount. <laughs> Optometrist. And how did you get the VHB off is the other question. Okay, so it's off. Let's get, let's flip the printer over. Um, all of this I think can go away. There we go. Flip a printer, yep. Poke Steve posted to remind him to put the STL on GitHub. What do I have here? I think that's that the only thing I've changed on. Oh, I got the different Wago mount is the only other thing I changed on here. Okay, the LDO kit has this little tiny FFC cable. And there are there is documentation on this. So let me bring this up. Um, there is documentation on how to use this. There's all this information, the LDO input shaper toolkit, the size of the sensor. I use these dimensions to make my mount. One screw to the PEI sheet. Um, and then there's guidelines on how to, the orientation of the, um, of the cable. So we are going to this this mounts to this little daughter board here and i think it mounts which way i'll try it like this let me, let me get my glasses on and see if i can see the contacts yeah 
think it mounts like this. Make sure it's seated all the way because this didn't work at first when I was messing with it and it, it didn't have the, the cable seated. And then I'm taking it through the same, the same hole here in the grill that I used for the display because everything else has, um, has hexes that are just too small for it to go through. This is going to go through like this. And then I think I'm going to plug it in on the, on the front and power this on before I, before I pull everything off or put everything back together and turn it upright. So you won't see, won't get a great view of me plugging this in, but correct way or does it go this way? What does that say? Is that going to the inside? Okay. There we go. Okay. So then we're just going to tuck this stuff up into the printer. This, the nice thing about the, the LDO input shaper kit is this this cable is super light. It's going to have minimal impact on the um, on the result, but let's power it on and make sure I've got everything connected right. So question, if an ADXL plus mount weighs 20 to 50 grams or more, is the difference of the ADXL attached versus not negligible versus not negligible? That's a great question, Brian. I don't know. So yeah, I did. So we'll go through the clipper documentation for um, this and we'll, I'll just talk about the steps because I did have to go through all of the steps to, to make this work. I thought mainsail OS had all of that pre-set up now, but it wasn't. So I think that the resonance of the printer would not change that much with the weight of the motion device. Printing my first hex tray in preparation for building my slab. Awesome. Will I make our galaxy black and starlight nebula? I have a roll of the starlight nebula. I haven't printed with it yet though. Okay, is this up? Okay, so let's go to here and where is, here we are. Let's just do a, what is it? Query accelerometer. If we go to the, 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 the measuring resonances page, let me copy this. This is where all the documentation is that we're going to use to install um, the the correct pa packages to support connecting the accelerometer directly to the Pi. Okay, and that's what we're doing here. We're using this little daughter board that LDO supplies, but we're basically using the um, the Pi directly for um, measuring the the thing. So. In, in general, let's go through the top here. So we're gonna measure resonances, all the stuff, um, installation instructions. So we're gonna do the, um, this, basically it's this setup here into directly into a Pi. Um, and then there's some software info. If we scroll down, it will be, uh, we gotta mount it, we do software installation. So, um, Note the resonance measurements and shaper auto calibration require additional software dependencies. So we run these commands and installs, um, does the updates, installs Python NumPy, um, and then you build it. Okay, so we did all this. Um, the other thing you have to do if you're going to connect directly to the Pi, you have to set up the the Raspberry Pi microcontroller um, as a as a MCU basically that's visible to Clipper. 
So it, it's why use Raspberry Pi as a secondary MCU. So basically you just go through and run these commands and then you actually build, you use make menu config to build the, um, the, the firmware. And it's a super quick, it takes moments to do this. There is no copying to SD card or anything like that. You just run these commands. And if you need it based on this uh, potential error, you run this one, but you run these, this little section here and, um, and then the, the, the Raspberry Pi will show up as an MCU to Clipper. So this page right here documents all of that. So now if we come back to this other page and we start looking at, um, if we come down here, we wanna measure uh, resonances. The first thing we're doing is doing our acceleration or accelerometer, accelerometer query. Um, so if we want to query the chip name, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna copy this because if we go back here and look at the, oh, and I probably need to um, turn this on, but if we go to my input shaper settings, this is setting up the both accelerometers. So we have the Raspberry Pi as a host MCU in here. Um, I don't use it anywhere else, so I just put it in here. Um, and then the hot end ADXL and the bed ADXL. So the hot end, these are all the settings from the Nighthawk and the, the Raspberry Pi setting is just that. And then we say acceleration chip for X is the hot end and acceleration chip for Y is the bed. So I put this in a separate file, input shaper.cfg. So I have to go back over here into my printer config and make sure that's not commented out. So it's not, so it should be good. So now we go to dashboard and we should be able to query and I haven't actually done this, um, but we should be able to chip bed and it should query the bed chip. Um, let's find out if it does it for the hot end. It's giving us an error. So we are getting a result for the hot end. So I'm glad I tested this before I put the printer back together. So I probably have something not hooked up right. So I'm gonna do a better, a better look at this. <laughs> Numpy, et cetera, is already installed on main cell OS. Okay. But I don't think it matters. You can run those and it'll it won't hurt anything. It'll just go through the process again. So that is in there all the way. And that is on there all the way. So is this one? Oh, it's backwards. I've got it backwards on the on the Pi side. So I'm gonna shut this down and reverse it. I'm gonna shut down the printer, reverse it, get it set back up. Numpy does take a long time. And that's why I'm kind of glad I didn't do it on stream. I did it before and just talked about it because we've done it on, on stream before as well. But here's the problem. On this side, I have the I have the cable in backwards. Admittedly, the documentation here, they have several of these. And the one that I have, they don't have the cable in here. <laughs> this one's different. That one's different. This one's different. The one that represents the, the board I have doesn't have a cable in it. So let's flip this around. Make sure it's fully seated because that was what the problem I had on it last night. That should do it. So let's power it back on and give it a try again. What are we almost oh, almost five hours. We're, we're still doing good. We were at six hours last last week. So the goal is to be less than last week. <laughs> Blue tab on the cable always goes on the same side as the locking tab on the connector. That's hard to tell what side is the locking tab on some of these. Honestly, on these little cables, it's hard to, to when I look at it, I couldn't tell you exactly which side is the locking tab because it's going straight in. Okay, this is gonna be back up. Let's go back 
here. Where's my mouse? There it is. Try again. And we'll rerun that bed. And we got it. Okay. Now that's my chat is hiding it. Um, let's see if it shows. There we go. In console. So I ran the accelerometer query chip bed and I'm getting values, which means it's reading off. And if we go um, back here and read the hot end, we're going to get values from the hot end. And at this point, that's all we really care about is because we're getting data from it. I have to go see the GP. Hope it goes long stream. I can use the company. <laughs> so these, these are working. I'm going to leave the printer on um, and just put the bottom panel back on now and then turn it up because um, that's fine. Let's get the bottom panel back on, get it on its feet and run some run some things. I like these little short feet. Keeps it nice and nice and low profile. When printing a test cube, how tight should the bushings be? They go in with little resistance, but don't fall out. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's probably pretty good. I wouldn't expect them to go in be too hard or too loose shouldn't fall out that's probably a good metric okay that is on so i'm going to you don't want to pull on any other parts of this enclosure you're going to pull on it near near the frame so now i've got this okay and this is this is so light I don't think it has much impact. Um, we're gonna start off by homing, and we're gonna just home, home all. Once you get the Phoenix built, you should print the acrylic panels in cream. <laughs> Make sure nothing gets caught up. Okay. So it is homed. I'm going to close these doors because that's going to be most representative of where things are going to be. I'm just going to make sure that FFC cable isn't in the way. Things closed. And then if we go back here, we can do, we can do a couple of things. We could run these individually um, and then get results from that. But right now I'm just going to run shape or calibrate. And that's documented um, here as well. If you keep going down, we can measure resonance. We check, we do the accelerometer query. You can test resonances per axis. And then if you keep going down, um, there is a part in here on um, auto input shaper auto calibration. So I'm just gonna run the shaper calibrate and it'll do both. So if we go back here and just go shape or calibrate, it's going to just start vibrating. Apollo, yeah, we I talked about that earlier as an option. Um, but I don't know how well it works or not. So this is going to go through. Come on, 45 hertz. <laughs> Can also force resonance at certain frequency. Yep, we did that. We did that last night. We were, we have a little spike in the Y at the 95-ish hertz range. And, oh, the bed, the whole, 
the whole enclosure is is resonating. Um, and I was running that on the bed, and I think it's just in. I think it's in the rail. So I want to swap out the rail and see how that impacts it. But um, Clippian Shake Tune is something I'm not. I know about it. I haven't dove into it. We weren't going to cover that today. We'll see what this, this is going to look completely different than what we were looking at last night. I'm, I, I would guess. But that's going for X and it'll finish off here in a second and then it'll run it in Y. The Clippian Shake Tune, and I think there's at least one other out there, can help automate some of the stuff we're going to do today um, and give you more insight, probably, into the different results and capabilities of doing tests if you know how to use it. Um, but we'll just be using the basic stuff right now. I think the panels will make a difference, yeah. I, I could hear it. <laughs> Input shaper, it hurts. <laughs> Can you have a stealth burn burner tap mode on a switch wire? The bed is too flexible for tap. Clip pain, not clip, not clippian. Is it really? I thought it was cl oh clip pain. Oh, I've been reading that wrong. Hey Derek, welcome. Auto connectors are on. Awesome. Why am I not live in my own preview? That's hilarious. Shake tune automates it and can also measure belt tension. Yeah. I am very close, Derek. We are going to run this this input shaper stuff. We're not going to go down a rabbit hole of diagnosing and going too far on it. We're going to run this, we're gonna accept the values, and we're gonna do a print. <laughs> Thanks for the gift of mem memberships, Derek. This live has made my shifts go by so fast. Awesome. Even if I have a thicker bed with dual Y motors? That's a good question. Why, I'm talking the, the, the spec, Switch wire, the bed is too flexible for tap. If you're if you've done something to your build that makes it stiffer, then um, you may be successful with it. Okay, I think this is done. Seen the construct printer. I'm looking at attaching MDF panels to all four sides. My under five. See what that does. Okay, so that is finished. We could pour through here and probably get the the info, but we're gonna go back to the document here, and I'm gonna do this the hard way. Just I'm gonna write off. This is gonna be the hard way. Um, there is a couple of commands here. I just have to figure out where they were. Um, where were those? For exporting the, the graphics. Sorry for the fast scrolling. Figure out where those where those ended up. You read through here. Oh, there they are. So there's a couple of scripts that will generate those graphs, and this is this is them. So, so I'm just gonna copy this one. And then we're going to bring up the, so this is a bunch of stuff we were working on last night, still in this window, but that's fine. Okay, so we're in, 
we're going to go, these are stored in the temp folder. So we're going to go to slash TMP. And those are our two CSV files there that were um, just generated. When you reboot the Pi, it clears the data here. So if you want to get your results um, when you're doing input shaper stuff, make sure you get them before you reboot the Pi. So I am going to paste this command and then um, we're gonna go back here. Oh, right here and delete this. Copy, like I said, I'm doing this the hard way and there are many of you that are yelling at your screen saying, you can do this and this and this um, in the terminal window. And I know, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't necessarily know, but I know I'm doing it the hard way. <laughs> anyway, we run one, so that's gonna do X. <laughs> Easy file names. I, I don't know what that means. Okay, so this is saying MZV at 60 hertz. That's actually, well, just the in general, we weren't getting MZV as a recommendation last night. And then I'm just gonna change this to a Y and the other one to a Y and run it for Y. You could run input shaper at 200 for Vorons. Not sure it would get you more than 133 for Voron. And MZV for Y. Interesting. So this is what the, the recommendations. Now we can now we can go and grab the um, the now it's created to um, PNG files that is the graphic. I could copy these. I could in from the command line, I could copy these over to the config folder. I don't have that config folder memorized. I need to put a little note here somewhere that has it. Um, I'm just going to use WinSCP and grab the the two files. Um, I'm going to, because I don't want to overwrite results we were getting before. Um, I'm going to create a new directory here. IS tests. And I'm going to throw it in there. So we got our two, our two things. You seem surprised what you have yesterday. A lot of EIs and two humps and, and stuff like that. Okay, so those are there. Now if I go to, and I'm gonna open up, let's look at X first. So here's our, here is our X result. And I would appreciate anybody who knows how to read these, what they think of that. We are, it is recommending MZV 60 Hertz. So. Okay. So that is X. Put this up over here. And here is Y and it does have the extra extra little spikes we were seeing before. Let's put that right there. What's that? What do we think of that? That is why with these, the same little in the 85, 90 ish range, less clean. Yeah. But we got some things we can try. Um, beyond this one of the one of the things like Reth said would like to try changing out the rail and see if there's an impact but like changing the location of the uh, of the sensor so we're gonna go with these values um, there are <sighs> that is likely the bed yeah um I don't know. Are there, what would someone say, those of you that might know, because this is actually a question I have, what are the best resources for learning how to um, read these graphs? It's 
par for a bed slinger. Go with two humpy guy. And why? So if we looked at why, is it because it's at 0% vibration or, and I know, shake tune, all that. Okay, shake, fricks, the shake tune, is that, are there, I haven't read through the whole, I saw the page, I haven't taken the time to read through. Too humpy eye because of the zero vibration. So if we go back to here, and this is finished, we can save config, and let's go ahead and do that. If we um, save the config, it's going to restart. There are two different YouTube videos on how to read the graphs. I found one of those really helpful. I don't know that I've watched the other. Fricks goes into a lot of it. Said three hump also had 0%. Why two hump over three hump? That's a good, that, I don't know. Do, can you, can we explain that? The higher up you go, the smoother, sharp edges, corners will be definitely a compromise thing. So if I go, so this is, this is saved. If we go into the machine and go to the printer config, scroll all the way down into the, the where, oops. Um, how am I going to fix this? Let's just do, hold on. Um, is this the one? I did, why did that do that? Well, there we are. Okay. <laughs> At the bottom of the, of the, <clears throat> it's too aggressive. Clipper picked MZV for both. So if you look here, it saved these in. If we wanted to change that, we could go down here for Y and we can look at our, mm -hmm, what was it? This one. Um, our two hump underscore EI is 62.4 Hertz. So we can go down here and change this to 62.4 and call this two hump. Is it, is it all lowercase okay? EI. Hey Poindexter. So you could overwrite what it saved and save and restart and I'll find out if it's an error or not, if it mattered. Yeah, so it, it took it. <sighs> three hump will smooth out details too much. Need to also change frequency. I did, didn't I? 62.4. Yeah. You can't see it. I cut off, I cut off the screen because I don't want my taskbar or the address bar to show when I'm sharing the screen. So it actually cuts that off a little bit. I probably need to adjust my scaling. About as good as you can expect for a bed slinger. Probably. Probably. Um, what is our default accelerations here? Max acceleration 1000. So we can change this. A stable base for the printer is necessary. Yeah, and my, my table here at those high, um, high vibrations, I can feel it in the table. Um, what were we looking at for these? We're looking at about 4,300 max Excel recommended. Is that where you get that? If we said 4,300 there and this one said like 10,000, but if I set my max Excel's on this printer to 4,000 and I'm, am I in a good spot? I switched to another stream for two hours after the giveaway and Steve is still streaming. Welcome back, Leo. <laughs> You still need to set your your firmware accelerations here. So if we set this to go with three. Okay. And I don't want, let's, I'm gonna leave the rest. So let's save and restart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us print. 
Been doing more testing today, a lot more to say about it, but we can do it off stream. Awesome. Let me shut this down and remove the, the sensor. So I'm gonna shut down the printer and remove remove all of this. I'm not gonna remove the underside, I'll just leave this um, hanging, but I wanna get a print going. Four to six max cell on Y is good on switch wire. Higher than that, you'll spend hours tuning belt tension. The aqua line on the chart shows the resulting vibrations with the recommended speed and filter. Where do you see that? What do you, where do you see that? Let's go to the, to the Y. The aqua line, that's this guy. That's the, that's the shape. Oh, that's this guy down here. But where do you see the recommended, what would it be according to this? Because that's the aqua line and it's down here, right? That's after shaper. Look on the left legend. Yeah, I see this. I don't see any numbers. Look at the MV MZV settings in the upper right. Right. But we set it to two humpy I. If we set it to two humpy I, it's saying 4,300. Right? We didn't set the, the, and we want to go with, you, you can't set these individually, right? You can't, in Clipper, you can't set your accelerations individually per X or Y axis. You, so you have to, Yeah. Maybe run a cube would recommend it and what folks thinks is ideal and compare. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Moving on. Let's go and remove this. So is this off? Do my little ribbon cable and pull this just off the off of the printer. So that's, once again, that's my little mount. I'd be curious where, once I get a few, a little more info on this, how this does, if other things are more optimum. Yeah, acceleration, not shaper, is what I meant per axis. Okay, let's power it back on. I know that this is exposed. Here, let's let's take care of that. We've got a we've got a wire there that's connected to the Pi that's exposed. Um, I just realized that as I was looking at it. So let's just do a quick. Just make sure I don't rub it against something and cause a cause an issue. <laughs> since this is still plugged in underneath, but I don't want to unplug it, so. <laughs> like, I don't understand this enough to go into a deep dive yet. I'm learning more as time goes on because I know a little bit more about this than I did. I mean, even not too long ago, but. Okay, we are up and running. Let's print. Let's print. First thing we need to do um, before we print, we already did a, a, a Z offset. Um, I need to comment the include. I don't actually have to, DJ Natty, I realize, because it's not going to cause an error because both MCUs are still there. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It can be there or not. Um, Anyway, before we do a print, I need to clean this bit. Oh, I do have to do the reverse button. You're right. Um, let me clean this. I have a sink right there. I'm going to do hot water and dish soap. It'll be just a moment.
It'll be just a moment. Towel to wipe it off. I am still going. Can you open configure for a moment? Sure. What do you want to see? I don't know what. Oh, I'm not. I'm not in the. What's that? This is the one. That's the config. <laughs> ah, we're about ready to start s slinging beds. Yes, finally. Let me turn that back on. Go here. So this should be clean. One can choose any shaper and manually tune the input shaper documentation goes into a great amount of detail on how you can tune individual axis as well as test. There is so much to it. Yes. So much to it. Okay. We have a ETFE tube that I was reminded I have not put on there yet. Am I imagining it or was that magnet printed? What magnet? Just straighten this out a little bit. So this is going to go in here. And basically, we just want to make sure that we can hit all the way down and on the corner over here. And then this should just go nice and easy into here. So something about like that be fine. It'll go through. Yeah. Something about like that. That goes there. Keep the reverse hot end you have in there. It is the, the hot end is a Revo Voron. It comes in the kit, comes in the LDO kit. What to do to keep the reverse 3ID OD Bowden tube from kinking without filament in it. Um, just have it routed so that it's nice, big uh, radius turns. I thought I saw text on the bed. Oh yeah. So on there, it says boron switch wire, do not print. This is all um, printed on the bed. It's, it is a, it's basically a Prusa MK52 um, heat bed. That's still a little bit wet. <laughs> I didn't dry the, the plate all the way. Did you use four by three or four by two? It's four by three. The kit comes with the four by three. And fortunately LDO has started including actual PTFE instead of FEP tubing. So it's better. PTFE is better than FEP. <coughs> you do need a piece of PTFE on the tool head. <laughs> it does have a spot. That's gonna go in there. And then we are going to cut it market. There. Okay. Everybody catching all the things I forgot. Now it's done. 
And I was going to do this, because I just grabbed a red. This is eSun PLA Plus that I've had for a very long time. It is Fire Engine Red, which is a great red. It's a nice dark red. I'm gonna use this. And it has been around a while. The very end of that was brittle. <laughs> Don't let Weasel on the Voron Discord see you using FEP. <laughs> print Paul prints as the first print fit the theme. I'm going to do the low poly cat. Um, so that's going to go in there. And then we're going to beat it up in. Okay. So let's go back in here and get this preheating. We are going to have it open. So it is PLA. Um, let's go, to, we gotta feed the filament. So let's get it heated up and then heat up the bed. Oh, I didn't install the LEDs. I'm not gonna get to the LEDs. I'm getting hungry. The LEDs did not get installed. I'm not going to. <laughs> Cali Cat is also a good idea. What probe are you using? This, the kit comes with an Omron. That's an area that I want to explore on this. I am getting hungry. I'm not hangry. I'm not hangry. I'm hungry though. My stomach's growling. I don't need LEDs to print. I wanted to, I actually wanted to get them installed, but. They are going to get installed, but they're not going to get installed on stream. <laughs> What's what uh, the, there are, there are almonds here. <laughs> I, I did bring these cause I kind of figured I was going to get, I was going to get hungry. The problem with almonds is they end up drying out my throat and then I cough more, so. <laughs> Are rainbows on a stick compatible with switch wire? Uh, if they're compatible with the controller you're using, then absolutely. I have not installed the LED effects plugin. I eat dinner during these streams. They chew easier than set screws. This is true. See you, Ref. Thanks again for your help. Okay, so this is heat, heated up. I'm just, I don't have any like, I don't have a macro set up for loading the filament. So I'm just going to use the handy dandy um, filament release lever here and manually load it. back in and there there we go it extruded so snake number two has been created where did it go there it is a baby snake <laughs> steve each channel with the leds what's the best tape to use um um, what's the stuff called that's probably, uh, there's a couple of things I do, I probably will use. I have some little clips that I modeled that just stick to the side here with um, uh, VHB tape. And the, the it just keeps gives you a spot to clip the wiring in. I think I'm going to do that. And I'll put those in the same repo when I do the other stuff. Okay, that is there. That is... Filament is loaded. Let's get this temperature back down to that and let's bring up Prusa Slicer. <laughs> this is, that is true, Michael. That is true. I, I'll give you that.
New version of Prusa Slicer is available. You wish to download it now. I'm at 2.7.0. 2.7.1 is out. This will be fine. Do I have a profile on here for Switchwire? If I go here, Switchwire. I know it's time to update. So I go Switchwire. And then a, do I have a switchwire filament? There we go. And a switchwire profile. And we'll go through and look at the settings in these. I'm just picking what I already have in here. And I don't know if they're optimum. Did you even set a print start macro? No. Nope. I know it's been out for a few, it's been out for more than a few weeks, I think. Okay, so basic settings. I've set, I've selected all the profile for Switchwire that I already have on this computer in Prusa Slicer. Um, basic settings being bed size. It's actually, the, the firmware is all set up for a 250 by 250 bed. We can just leave that. It's an, I, I'll check to see if it's a multi-extruder. No, nope, it's one extruder. Orca slicer. Um, I'm, we could try a default Orca slicer profile and see what happens. Switch wire profile added as a printer. Um, we have all of this, we go into our, I do, I do most of my print start in the slicer. I have not moved to a point where I'm using print start macros in Clipper. Um, I haven't actually found the benefit to it. So I do most of my print start stuff still in the slicer. Should I try Orca? No. I mean, I mean, I'm getting some experience with Orca on the VZ bot, but I'm just going to stick with what I have. My print start is basically just heating up the, um, go away, um, heating up the, the hot end to a low temperature, waiting for the bed to heat up, running a, 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 a home and bed mesh and, and doing a purge line and print. Okay. Um, super slicer. So that's, that's where my, this is, this is all of the, the start print start I have. If we go over to filament settings, we're going to print at 215 with a 60 degree bed. Um, whatever I calibrated before for a generic PLA. And do we have a, some pressure advanced value here? None of these are going to be optimum. We're just going to print. Hot end bed and chamber temp per filament, et cetera, is not great in Orca. Hmm. And then my print settings here. So 0.2 layer heights, we're doing two perimeters. Um, but down here in speeds, they're not super slow, but they're not fast. This is all stuff we can play with. Um, default accelerations of 3000. So that's what we said in the firmware too. So yeah, pressure advance needs to be tuned. Uh, and I really do final tuning on that anyway. Pressure advance and extrusion multiplier with prints. So all just basic settings. So let's get, let's get a, oh, where'd that go? Ah. No. Nope. Um, that's not what I want. I'd still a low poly cat. Okay. So the other thing I want to do here though is go in here and look at the, the printer. And this is switchwire.local. Um, let's change this to Charlie wire. 
and test it. And it is working. So if we say OK and OK, and we slice this, and we should be able to send it directly to the to the printer. Mm -hmm. Set over there, load settings from G-code in case you already have a well-tuned G-code. Where was that? I don't have anything well-tuned. <laughs> so that's the slicer side. This is all warmed up, ready to go. That file got moved over here. Um, let's get a better camera angle on this, I think. I don't know if, well, this one usually does weird things. Let's just do a zoomed in version of this. Um, there we go. Does that work pretty good? I think so. It was a hint the Prusa slicer gives you. Manual nozzle offset on this. Yes. So we, we set that last week. Um, it should still be valid. I haven't changed anything that would cause it to, um, to have drifted. So let's find out what this ends up looking like. Yeah, oozing. So let's just print it. And I'm just starting the job, which means it's gonna home and bed mesh. Now, things that I want to continue with on this, I really want to explore bed meshing and doing um, um, fault zones in the bed mesh. You can define where the magnets are and it's doing it right now because we were playing around with it a little bit. But um, you can define where the magnets are and it's it should try to avoid those for your bed mesh. And that's why I was asking earlier, if anybody has a really good one of those, it'd be interesting to, um, to see. The bed mesh is not in the middle because I didn't put it on all the way. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is a five by five. Hey, <laughs> Sean. We are really close. Once this has done a few layers, we have a successful print going. We'll probably call it. I'll fix it for you, DJ. Just give it a second. Let's see. Oh, maybe. There we go. Shifted it back in place. Okay, now I gotta watch this. I'm gonna look at the... Oh, and it's gonna, it's gonna purge right off the front of the bed. Purging right off the front. Yeah, that's sticking. Yeah, it could probably be a little closer. <laughs> the zero zero position is not correct. It's not. Hmm. See if we can get any, any <clears throat> better. There is live adjust. Yep, on the screen, I can do it. I can do it here on the screen. Was the printer used for bed leveling? Clicky probe, it's an, it's an inductive probe. It's an Omron probe. 
He's in the bed for an hustle scrubber. <laughs> well, let's see. If this becomes a problem, I'll switch back. But. Oh. Um. Are any of the LEDs set up in here? No, the LEDs are on, but it didn't. Isn't potty trained. <laughs> not Why not a thicker bed? Is that because it's a bed slinger? Partly, but part of the design um, was using the Prusa Mark III bed. And that's, I mean, that was part of the initial, the core thing was using this bed for this build. So. That help? Can't really see any of it anyway. Is this, that's not better, but I can probably get a better angle if I come down and get closer. Is that better than the, than the webcam? Probably. I need a nozzle cam. I have one. Cloverfield cam. <laughs> Can't be proper lens and camera. Yeah. It's looking good though. It's printing. Oh, sorry. Got any better? <laughs> it is printing. Oh. Fancy ring light. <laughs> we got to switch to this cover, this angle for a second. It's printing. It's printing. Ready? Ready? Oh. There we go. It's printing. Sorry, Mad Cat. Do a best recommendation for getting Euclid working on Trident. I've done a video on Euclid and I've, I've got it running on my Tridex. I use a Euclid on my Tridex. Honestly, use the, clip, use the clicky macros with the Euclid. They're all set up to do it. It's a 4.3 inch display. We're printing the low poly cat. Hmm. It's a stupid cat. <laughs> I apparently didn't configure the stealth burner LEDs and I'm regretting that. <laughs> I don't think I've done centralist homing on the on a Trident on stream. I have one running. How loud is it? Let me turn off the audio filtering. 
Let me turn off the audio filtering real quick. So, shouldn't be a problem, but headphone users beware, just in case. Noise suppression is now off. You need to get close, get my beard out of the way. The fans are pretty much, you hear a little bit of stepper noise. Yeah, it's not loud. It's definitely not loud. I forgot to turn that back on last time, so I'm turning it on now. What stepper motors are these? These are 1.8 degree um, LDO. I think they're 42 millimeter bodies. One. Um, 1.6 amp. <clears throat> the... Would a 4.3 inch display be too big for a Micron 180? You have to put it at a pretty good angle. I think it's too big, but there are mounts for it. Some people like it. I like my 3.5 inch display on my Micron. Yeah, we're getting good. We're getting a good print. We'll see what it looks like up close when it's done. But yeah. What are we doing next Sunday? If I get enough stuff done, then it might be um, starting on Rook. If I don't get enough stuff done, it might be not be a terrible idea to finish LEDs and stuff like that on this. Maybe talk a little bit more if I have something to talk about um, on other aspects of the build. Um, I could maybe do a combination, do a little bit more on this and then get into a little bit on Rook. How much faster do you think this can go? We could play around with bumping up the speeds. Yeah. And just do a print and chill with this. Maybe do a little more detail in the slicer and, and stuff. See you, Biney. Do you remember which screen is on your Micron? I've been looking to add one to mine. I'm not sure the one I have is available anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a it's a four it's a 3.5 with an HDMI connection, but it's an IPS. My my big thing when I'm looking for screens, I want them to be capacitive touch. That's the biggest thing, and most of those are going to be IPS displays, I think. At least from WaveShare and stuff like that. I don't like resistive touch displays. I don't. <clears throat> Don't like them. So, making a disappearance. Thanks. See you, Greg. When the Phoenix gets a screen, can you do Dancing Max as a screensaver? That's a great idea. Now, Phoenix does have a five-inch display. Um, that seems really small, but the the way it mounts and and stuff, it is a five-inch display. Three point five and CN are all resistive. I have a three point five capacitive. Um, they are available. You just got to find them. I, I can try to help point you in the right direction. Phil, you did not join Pol Polar Ted's club. What if we bump the speed? couple of steps. I just bumped the speed a little bit with the screen. Thanks, hobbyist. 
It says it's going at 150%. Let's go 200%. 200%. Oh yeah. <laughs> Little PWM display or LED. We'll see. Keep an eye out. I'll think about it over the week on what what I'm going to be prepared for. One factor, a good factor in that is I had mentioned that I, I've ordered crushed rock for my shed. Um, it's being delivered tomorrow, which means many of my evenings are going to be spent shoveling crushed rock. So I may not get a lot of time to prep for something as involved as the rook build is going to be. So we might be doing a print and chill next Sunday. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Just started my switch wire build today while watching. Awesome. Oh, there is a Tuesday stream. Yes, I'm still doing Tuesday. That's all set. I don't have any prep on that. I just stand in front of a camera and yap and build for a while. <laughs> still, be, it's still going to be a Tuesday stream. Yes, but the Sunday stream is a. Um, we'll see. Um, right. Right, so I, I I will not be shoveling on Tuesday. You're right. <laughs> Tuesday is stone shoveling live stream. I'll just put the GoPro on my shoulder and POV view. <laughs> yeah, it's all sticking. It's all sticking and staying. Tuesday will be the mystery stream. No, Tuesday will be Mark 3 to Mark 4 upgrade, continuing that build series. Have Pooch come to help shovel, help shovel. That's not a bad idea. Get some, get it done quicker. I've got memories of shoveling rock around my house many years ago. Yeah. So I'm right there. I'm so close. I mean, hopefully within a couple of weeks, I'm actually ordering the shed. And then just a few weeks later, I'll be able to use it. So but I'm also battling with um, daylight. By the time I'm starting, um, I'm starting a stream on Tuesday, it's getting the sun is almost set. So I'm not impacting my shoveling time much by doing a stream tomorrow. Dr. Dave, you're going to get it up before? Before that, that's awesome. I'd come to help with back surgery. Well, that's a good excuse. <laughs> my my son will be will be contributing to the to the shoveling. <laughs> How big will it be? Ten by twelve. That's the biggest I can go without a permit. And really, it's the biggest my yard will support. And I ordered a, I already ordered the, a tough shed. I got their tall, elite, pro, whatever. So it'll have eight foot walls at least. <clears throat> 10 by 12, eight foot walls. Pay the flight and I'll bring a shovel. <laughs> Right now it's setting just after five. And it's two cubic yards of crushed rock, which I think is about 3000 pounds. I don't remember what the calculator told me. It would fit Phoenix. It would even fit through the door. It's a three foot door. So I could fit Phoenix in there. <laughs> right now it's going to be storage and storage <laughs> this space is going to transform once i get that up mm. 
Are we still doing good? Yeah. Everything's still sticking. Everything's still good. Nikita shoveling rock. Take it slow and easy. I, I, I'm planning on that. I'm planning on about an hour a night. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but shut up. Moving back to the other garage. We work, rework. No. Um, well, it'll be shut up, rework the small garage. But in the meantime, I get to move a lot of stuff out of here and make it a little more usable space. Then rework the small garage, then move this stuff in there, then really rework this one. Lift from the back and shovel using a quick jerking motion. That sounds great. I'll ask Mad Cat if he recommends that. <laughs> of course, you have a Bobcat. You don't have to take it slow and easy. I don't have a Bobcat. Phoenix needs to stay by the power panel. Um, I will have the... The shed is going to have a 50 amp sub panel in it. More paint meds, please. <laughs> I I am doing a um, a 50 amp sub panel in the in the shed. It's already permits approved. The electrical conduit has been laid, trenched and laid. Um, the ground rods are going in. A Raspberry Pi hit 50C, so the fan turned on. And it actually hit 49C. It turned on. So it's a fancy shed. Yeah, so the, um, the plan is to first get it used for storage, but then I'm going to panel. I'm going to insulate and put... Uh, finish the walls inside. Probably not with drywall. I'll probably use a, a plywood or something as the interior walls and paint them. They're not solid copper, are you nephews? The ones that are available here that are supposed to meet code are plated copper. They're a steel rod with uh, with a coating on them. There's no way they're solid copper. It was like 15 bucks each. They're not aluminum. They're too heavy to be aluminum, I think. The one of the options I did choose on the shed is it'll have the moisture barrier already installed. So hey Thunder Keys, we're just about done. I'm just gonna see a little bit more of this print. Get refrigeration panels to line the shed? What's that? I don't think we're going to see this print finish. I'm probably going to... We're at the six hour mark now. What am I finishing the exterior with? It's done already. They come pre-painted. So it's just panels and paint. Yeah, this will be a good test for ringing. And it has been. I mean, we're using the values as recommended. Well, with the tweak. Hmm. I don't know what that is, tuxedo. And I hope my chewing isn't too big of a deal. These are almonds. I'm... <laughs> I 
I have that I bought years ago, a whole stack of um, basically um, the floor tiles that snap together, the plastic ones that snap together. I'm probably going to put those out there. No problem, Brent. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Chewing cancellation works. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's um, Race Deck. Race Deck is the brand. Um, actually, the ones I have are from the Craftsman brand. I bought them at Sears years and years and years ago when we first moved in here. Um, but they, they're compatible with Race Deck. It's the same stuff. I'm heading to bed 1 a.m. here and just lost all energy. <laughs> Good night, Nathan. Thanks for being here. Okay. We are right at getting close to the six hour mark. So I think we're going to call it. Um, so I think you're going to win the Phoenix fat rig race. I'm still waiting on a Kraken. I need to get, I need to get back on that, but thank you everybody. Thank you. Huge thanks to uh, LDO for supplying this kit and supplying one that we gave away today. So congratulations to the winner that was. Yes, the winner. Um, <laughs> thanks to Polymaker for our regular um, filament giveaway. Thanks to everyone to gifted memberships, became members. Um, thanks for everyone who stuck around for six hours. We had over 600. What, did we hit over 600 people today? It's nuts. So, Cliff D, thank you. Thank you, Cliff D. Um, Charlie Wire is working, yes. So, we will be back at it on Tuesday for the um, Mark III to Mark IV upgrade series. And then next Sunday, stay tuned on what we're going to do there. So, hope everyone has a good rest of your weekend. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.